Good evening and welcome to Gladiators TV. My name is Gareth Bemister. I won't be your commentator this evening, but I am the, uh, I'm working on the Centre Green this evening, on Centre Green duties. Later on you will have Joe Bell as your commentator, but for now you're stuck with me. And we are here for this championship encounter this evening. The Plymouth Gladiators taking on the Glasgow Tigers. A very interesting meeting this evening. We've had quite a damp day here in, in Plymouth this evening. Uh, it's dried out now completely. It's nice and sunny now. So the track surface looks absolutely tip-top for this evening. But anyone following this championship this year will see that this league this year is really, really intriguing. The top three, well, they're gone. They've gone. Paul Pirates, Scunthorpe. Uh, they've all flown already, they're up into the playoffs, but the rest of the league is absolutely anyone's at the moment, with only four points spreading most of those teams for that final playoff spot. Two of the teams, Glasgow Tigers and Plymouth Gladiators. Gladiators at the moment sit on the bottom of the table, which doesn't look good on paper, but a win tonight sees them go straight up through the league, they get on terms with all of those clubs that are looking to get into those playoffs those all-important playoffs, so there's loads and loads to play for. Added to that, the Tigers are without four of their main team members. They've got four guests coming in. Lots of people around the track are saying there are four very capable guests and perhaps even look very strong on paper. But, as we've said so many times here on Gladiators TV, Speedway is not raced on paper. So it's anyone's. We'll have to wait and see. What we're going to do now is we're going to head into the pits, we're going to catch up with uh, one of the home riders or the home manager first of all, see their thoughts going into this all-important encounter here, the Gladiators versus the Tigers. So we are first of all catching up with Gary May, the team manager of course for the Gladiators and Gary, this is the business end of the season, this isn't it? Yeah, I know, yeah, but we we'll try our best, uh, obviously we couldn't get no guests again. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll give it a good go against Glasgow and see what happens. It's an interesting time because we were saying on the intro, Gladiators, of course, at the bottom of the league, but they're still within reach of the playoffs. Yeah, I know we are, yeah. If we can win tonight and maybe take the bonus, but I think that's a big ask. But, you know, we've got places where we can go and still win. So, yeah, we can still creep in with, a, uh, with the points, yeah. And uh, ride replacement at number one? Yeah, ride replacement number one. I... I, I about 14 riders I contacted and uh, for various reasons they were busy taking their girlfriends out on holiday you know so I couldn't get anybody's but I was thinking of putting an ad on Facebook you know a six point uh, rider wanted at um, Plymouth on Saturday uh, rates have paid quite good but I didn't <laughs> in the end because there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, obviously tonight we've got a, you know, a decent crowd, a good meeting head, and these Tigers are unusual because they've got so many guests for them this evening. Yeah, no, they, they took three of the ones as well, yeah, but no, they're, uh, I think this made them stronger because I, don't, I couldn't see the, their foreigner magic getting around here. Uh, Liam's, you know, having an off-season, you know, he's good and then he's not good. And, well, Chris Harris is always good. But, I, you know, I felt we had a chance against him. But I think this has made him stronger with Jason Edwards and George and Jenkins and Anders Rowe. But I mean, my boys will give it a go and uh, like I say it's our arm. we just got to do our best. Well, good luck for tonight, Gary. Hopefully it all goes well. And, uh, yeah, let's look forward to a really cracking end to the season. Yeah, we haven't got a meeting next week, but then we go against Paul thing. But... I don't know if you've seen our schedule now. We go to Red Car on a Thursday, back to Plymouth on a Saturday, then all the way to Workington for a five o'clock start on the Sunday, on a bank holiday. Who 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 got that one sorted out? Eh? Okay, mm. only Speedway, innit? Eh? That's all right. All right, bye bye. <laughs> <laughs> so here are tonight's lineups. For the home team, for the Gladiators, they'll be operating rider replacement at number one. Number two is Alfie Botel. Dan Thompson at number three. Patrick Beck will be number four. Ben Barker captains from number five. Joe Thompson at six. And number seven is Jacob Hook. The team manager, Gary May. For the Glasgow Tigers, we've got Chris Harris captaining at number one. Jack Smith at two. And then we've got the first of four guests, Jason Edwards at number three. Jordan Jenkins at number four. Anders Rowe at number five. And James Pearson at number six. And at number seven is Jody, Jody Scott. Cammy Brown is the team manager. So now down to where we've got Joe down in the pits and he will be live trackside. Good evening everybody. Welcome to a busy pits here at the Plymouth Coliseum on what promises to be an action-packed Saturday evening here in an overcast and humid Devon for the Cab Direct Championship action between the Pro Park Plymouth Gladiators and the Allied Glasgow Tigers. 
It is busy. As I said, we do have an, an after show, if you like, tonight. The British 250cc Championships Round 2 taking place. More on that as the evening progresses, but we'll just take a look around the Glasgow pits. Um, Glasgow doing well to get as many guests in as they can for tonight. Jordan Jenkins, Jason Edwards, Jody Scott, and in shot there, Anders Rowe stepping in to uh, fill the void that has been left tonight by several missing Glasgow riders. And, of course, the main attraction is Chris Harris. We just had an exhibition from Cruz Harris going round the track and looked just about as comfortable as any other rider has all season. But into the Plymouth pits, a spirited effort on Wednesday night away at the Oxford Cheetahs going down by 12 points. There's Patrick Beck looking to build on his first two meetings that he's had in, in Gladiator's colours. Looking good and in good humour with himself. As we pan round Alfie Botel. We'll be looking to kick on from a really good night at Oxford on, uh, on Wednesday night. Five points from his four rides. We'll look to improve on his good recent home form. And there's the captain, Ben Barker. Well, if everybody, ever anybody needed improvement from Wednesday night, it was Ben. Really frustrated with his efforts on Wednesday night. But what can we, else can we say about the Dan, Dan Thompson and Joe Thompson combination? Superb in midweek. Dan almost had his bike on a scale electrics track flying around Sandy Lane in superb form, even beating Sam Masters in one of his programme rides. As we head down, Ben Trigger spannering for Jacob Hook this evening, and there's Gary May. Gary, who's exhausted every option, as we heard before the meeting, to find a replacement for Nico Cavati before tonight. Instead, it will be rider replacement, as Gareth mentioned, at number one for the Gladiators. But actually, if you look at the, uh, the guests that the Glasgow Tigers have brought in, this perhaps does make the meeting a lot more even than it first looked like it might do. That's the general consensus talking to people in and around the Coliseum this evening, is that the, the strong choice of guests that Cami Brown has brought in for Glasgow. Let's have a quick word with Cami if we can. Yep. Cami, welcome to a humid and overcast okay. Evan. Yeah. Um, you've done quite well to put a team together tonight, haven't you? Exhausted all the guests that Gary wanted, <laughs> by all accounts. It's been really difficult. Um, you know, I've got to thank uh, uh, Peter Fazena and Alan Dick in the background. They've helped. They worked hard, you know, as they always do. So, yeah, we've got a good team, good looking team on track, and working with some guys that I've never worked with before who are all nice boys. And we're hoping to put on a performance and hopefully try and sneak a win. But it's going to be difficult. We know, we know how hard it is here. But, you know, I've been here a couple of times and won both times, so I want to keep that going. And uh, that's the plan. Certainly was a good win here last year. Obviously, the aggregate yeah. point, big advantage coming into tonight. Just hoping to cement that aggregate point in this late push for the playoffs yeah. and try and build momentum. I think after Glasgow, I think we, sh we should have the bonus. It's OK. Um, we're far enough ahead not to worry about that. But, you know, we're here to try and win like we always do at Glasgow. So, um, you know, that's what we're going to do. And as I say, we've got a good team on the track, but we know how good Plymouth are. And uh, we respect them and we're going to give her 100% best. Chris in good shape after his accident he's, midweek? He's OK, he's OK and again, um, you know, he's one of these guys who just wants to ride his bike and he, he shakes off things like that, it wasn't his fault. Uh, must say as well, you know, you guys make it very friendly for us to be here. All the pit staff and the owners and the track staff, excellent, that's the way it should be in Speedway. There's not enough clubs do it, I say it, when the clubs do do it, I always say. And um, it's very warm welcome for the riders and mechanics and, you know, the staff here, so well done. Lovely. Well, let's hope for a clean, safe meeting and all the best. Cammy, hopefully catch up with you later. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Cammy Brown in good nick. As you would expect, a uh, team manager who's trying to get his team into the playoffs. We are going to be cracking on with things fairly sharpish tonight with the uh, British Youth Championships Round 2 coming up later. And as I say, it's so overcast here in Devon, we don't quite know what the weather's going to do. There is a bit of mist forming on the trees around the back of the Coliseum. There's Jordan Jenkins, one of the Oxford Chiefs who defeated the Gladiators on Wednesday night. Had a good night for his parent club, the Cheetahs, and we'll be hoping to replicate that form tonight. And of course, Jody Scott was also part of that Cheetahs side who picked up that narrow 12-point victory. Jack Smith, who'll be partnering Chris Harris throughout the evening tonight, will be hoping for a big night. Had a good night against the Gladiators up at Ashfield earlier in the season. And we will be cracking on with it very soon. There's Chris Harris just preparing himself getting ready to go to action. Chris, of course, a Truro lad. A relative homecoming for Bomber. But let's, uh, let's head on up back to the gantry as we get ready for the track parade. Let's try and uh, get up there sharpish before I get run over by the ones to sevens as the track staff make their way out onto the circuit. 
As I say, the mist is rolling in over the hills behind us, but we'll be very soon getting underway here at the Colosseum. And just like that, through the power of broadcasting, you now find me up on the gantry this evening. As I mentioned, it really is a, a grey evening overhead tonight. It was a, we've had all sorts of seasons recently. We had rain at four o'clock. We had beautiful sunshine at five o'clock. We've got overcast at conditions at six o'clock. Let's hope we have good conditions at seven o'clock as the Plymouth Gladiators make their way out onto the track. First, Alfie Botel is the first one out onto the track. As I mentioned, Alfie getting a good win on Tuesday, on Wednesday night. Anders Rowe, the next one out. I do wonder whether Alfie might have just broken the parade a little bit here. As we've got a lot of the Glasgow riders coming out next. A couple of, well, one ex-gladiator in the side in James Pearson. James finished the season here last year. Jason Edwards coming in to guest who Rode at number one for the Gladiators on Wednesday night's meeting at Sandy Lane. Put in a really good effort, Jason. He's always one who, who tries his very best with the rest of the riders. And there is Chris Harris. Always a big draw. And particularly at what is effectively his homecoming. The nearest club to home. The, uh, the closest meeting he's got to home, if you like, from Churro is Plymouth. And he'll be hoping for a big night here for his Glasgow Tigers tonight. It's down to Chris to lead the way with a with a patched up Gla Glasgow Tiger side, but as Cammy Brown seemed in good spirits beforehand, he's done he's done well to to put a side together. Extending a warm welcome to you Glasgow Tigers fans watching at home and all other Speedway fans at home. You are very welcome to Gladiators TV this evening. Great to see such a smattering of Glasgow fans who have made that long trip down to the West Country as well. Great to see such travelling support. Of course, there was a good travelling support at Sandy Lane on Wednesday night. But we are going to pause for a minute silence before tonight's meeting. After the passing of Tony Steele, Gareth, who we heard from before the meeting, just explaining Gareth's uh, Tony Steele's career, distinguished referee and well-respected figure within the sport. So we will pause for a moment's silence in memory of Tony Steele. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Steele. As you would expect, a well-received moment silence in memory of Tony Steele as it was at Oxford on Wednesday night and as it has been at every Speedway track up and down the country since Tony's sad passing earlier in the week as announced by British Speedway. But we're about to be introduced to tonight's teams, Chris Harris and Ben Barker, two proud Cornishmen. About to have the coin toss with Clark of the course, Rob Durant. And Glasgow it is, by the looks of it, who have won that toss. And we will soon hear the news of that result. Ben, who's had a good coin toss record of late, but looks like Chris Harris may well have won this one. And Gareth will soon deliver that important news. And they've taken gates one and three, which in your programmes is column B. Glasgow taking one and three for this evening's meeting and let's meet the Tigers and riding at number one the one and only Chris Harris what more can you say about Bomber 
always a great entertainer and sure to put on a show tonight. Number two, Jack Smith. As I say, rode quite well at Ashfield earlier in the season. And then we get into some guests and Jason Edwards, who rode so well on Wednesday for the Gladiators, goes against them tonight at number three for the Tigers. And Jordan Jenkins, also involved in that fixture on Wednesday night. He is here at number four. Anders Rowe is at five. Anders, who's having a year out of Championship Speedway in Britain this year, but guesting here for Glasgow as he did last night in that postponed meeting at Edinburgh. There's James Pearson, who finished the season as a Gladiator last year. We're looking to show the Plymouth side what they're missing. And at number seven is youngster Jody Scott. But let's make our way over to the Plymouth side. <coughs> and as mentioned, we'll come to it in a minute. But there's Jacob Hook at number seven. Hopefully Jacob will have another strong night. And at number six, Joe Thompson, who had a great night in midweek, looking to continue on his fantastic form of late. Ben Barker, captain at number five. Trusty spanner Mark Simmons back on the bike tonight. That will be a big help to Ben. There's Patrick Beck having his fourth meeting now as a gladiator. Dan Thompson flew round Sandy Lane on Wednesday. We'll be looking for more of the same. And at number two is Alfie Botel, who's in good form at home. And it, as mentioned, it will be rider replacements at number one for the Pro Park Gladiators this evening. Just a heads up for those of you who are joining the stream for the first time tonight and don't know quite what happened at Ashfield earlier in the season. The Tigers ran out 58-32 winners. Quite tight up until heat number eight, 24-18 at that juncture of the meeting, but the home side really did fire in some maximums and took it away from the Gladiators. The Gladiators who had Tate Zischke guesting for them that night at number one. Just doing some practice starts down the back straight there. You can see James Pearson, Alfie Botel alongside him. Jason Edwards flies by. Ben Bark is back there as well. Chris Harris joining them now. But this really does promise to be an interesting, uh, interesting fixture here tonight. As I mentioned beforehand, the general consensus talking to people on my walk around the Coliseum before tonight's program is that the, the Glasgow reserves have made this meeting a lot more interesting than perhaps it first seemed to be. And Gary May also believes that the Glasgow's choice of guests has certainly made it a lot more tighter than probably he would have wanted. But we won't be long in getting underway. As I mentioned when I was down in the pits beforehand, we do have a second half here this evening. We do have round two of the British 250cc championships. First round took place all the way back in May at Workington. But we will fill you in with more details on that a lot later on so do stick around if you have paid for the live stream you will get the British Youth Championships at the end and you are very welcome to join us for that a little bit later on six heats from them and a final they'll be looking for vital championship points those riders as we just see Jason Edwards leave the track he's got a big job to do tonight for the Glasgow Tigers I'm sure Jason being the type of rider that he is will put on a a brilliant performance as he does for whoever he rides for. Really is a 100% trier that we'd all love to have in our teams and we're very lucky in both of these teams that we do have 100% triers. They always do give it our all, particularly from the Plymouth side, Alfie Botel, Dan Thompson, Joe Thompson, Jacob Hook is a rider who improves with every meeting. But there was a buoyant mood down in the pits and if you are playing Gary May rider replacement bingo at home, you, if you've predicted Ben Barker to come out in red in heat number one, you are correct. So Ben Barker will take the rider replacement ride in heat number one. He will join Alfie Botel, Chris Harris and Jack Smith on the start line in a minute. We aren't too far away, I think, for a start. Don't be surprised if we try and get through some of these races pretty quickly this evening. As mentioned, we do have that second half to squeeze in. And we'll hope that the weather gods play ball this evening and that we can get through it fairly comfortably. There is Jack Smith preparing for his first ride of the evening. Jack, who's into his third spell with the Tigers and spent six years riding for the Bellevue Colts, scored seven points in the return fixture. Good to see such a good enthusiastic crowd into the Coliseum once again. You can see there on the screen the NHS stand is, is full and there's the, the bar bandits. 
giving us a nice little wave. Somehow they knew the camera was on them. They were in full voice and in good numbers at Oxford on Wednesday, as were a number of Plymouth supporters. And it really is great that, particularly as I mentioned, with these Glasgow fans who've made this long trip to the southwest here tonight, that Speedway clubs do continue to have good support on the road. We're now just waiting for the two-minute time allowance to be put on them for heat number one. 58-32 then is the aggregate lead that Glasgow are defending. Cammy Brown seemed fairly jovial and confident that he'll be able to defend that. Sure, sure Gary May will be looking to steal that off him. If you did miss it, Ben Barker will take the rider replacement ride in red here in place of Nico Cavassi. He will be coming off gate number four. Reminder, Glasgow have won the toss, chosen gates one and three in the coin toss this evening. And here we go then. Bikes out on the track and Captain Ben Barker is the first one onto the track and he's greeted with a good cheer from the home crowd. Alfie Votel follows him round. <coughs> ben will be hoping for a better night tonight than he had on Wednesday at Oxford. Nothing that Ben tried went his way. Hopefully we'll tr we're going to try and catch up with Ben a little bit later on in the meeting and he'll be able to explain it in better detail than I will. But he wasn't best pleased with with how Wednesday night went for himself. No matter what he did, nothing worked. But the riders are coming round to the tapes for heat number one of the evening. So let's take in the lineup. And off the inside in yellow will be Jack Smith. Gate number two in blue will be Alfie Botel. Gate number three in white is Chris Harris. And gate number four in red is Ben Barker. So the two skippers will be going off three and four. The home skipper in gate four in red. And we are set for what promises to be a really exciting night down at the Coliseum. If the last few meetings are anything to go by, then we are in for another good one here this evening. It's a full gantry to my left with all the junior riders and the Glasgow and Plymouth boys filling as many gaps as they can. But we are soon about to get some bikes out onto the track. Start Marshall now starts to call them forward. And here we go. The end of season push for both teams started at the end, start of this month. And it's only going to get tougher from here for them to squeeze into the playoffs. But they're both going to do their best. And it gets underway with heat number one. The tapes are up and away we go. And Ben Barker's made a flyer. But Chris Harris is right there as well. And it's Harris it is who takes the lead. Ben Barker's going to go around the outside of Alfie Botel and slot into second. Alfie's in third and Jack Smith just struggling with his machinery a little bit there at the back. But Chris Harris is out and gone here in heat number one. And that, that's something we've said so many times around so many tracks. And he's showing them the way home here. Ben Barker has settled into second place. Alfie Botel is comfortable in third. Jack Smith just a bit of drift at the back. But Harris is looking stylish out in front here. And for Cammy Brown, this is just the start that the doctor ordered. And with one lap to go, Chris Harris continues to show the way from Ben Barker. Alfie Botel in third. Jack Smith at the back. They're well strung out here in heat number one. But Cornishman and Truro native Chris Harris will show the West Country crowd just how it's done in heat number one at the Coliseum. Chris Harris absolutely flies round to take the opening race win for the Glasgow Tigers. Ben Barker second, Alfie Botel in third, and Jack Smith comes home in fourth. But it is the perfect start in a way for Cammy Brown. Just settle any of those early nerves. And Chris Harris taking a new track record around the Coliseum. He hasn't taken very long to settle into his stride. That will be a big boost to him. Let's take the result of heat number one. A win in white for Chris Harris. Second in red, Ben Barker. Third in blue, Alfie Botel. Fourth in yellow was Jack Smith. And just to put it into context, that track record is 51.49. The previous track record that was set by Josh Pickering here at the start of July was 52.3. Chris Harris has absolutely flown around the Coliseum. And we're going to see it here for you in all its glory on the replay. And this is about as good as a start as you will see. Harris in white coming off gate number three. Tapes are about to fly up any moment now. Start Marshall moves out of the way. And watch this, Harris is out. He gets to the corner first. He nudges Ben Barker into no man's land. Ben has to go wide. And from there, Chris flies around and breaks that track record. So on to heat number two then. As mentioned, we are going to be cracking on with the action just over a minute and a half left to go 
for the riders to get round to the tapes, but I don't think we've got any issues with that here as they come round to the tapes. Joe Thompson in red. As I mentioned, we'll be looking to continue this wonderful run of form he's on, particularly at home. And here is your lineup. Off the inside in red is Joe Thompson. Gate two in white is James Pearson. Gate number three in yellow, Jacob Hook. And off the outside in blue, uh, yellow even, is Jody Scott. Sorry, the red and yellow contrast just threw me off a little bit there. Jody Scott is in yellow. Joe Thompson in red. James Pearson in white. Jacob Hook in blue. And Jody Scott will be on the outside in yellow. So that task of bridging that 58-32 gap has just got a lot harder for Gary May and his men with a three-all heat share in race number one of the evening. We won't be soon before we're getting underway here in heat number two. Thompson, Pearson, Hook and Scott at the tapes. And it'll be James Pearson, the last one into line. Start Marshall just trying to work out where he'll go between rider, riders. He will go between gates three and four, but he will now move out of the way. And the green light is on for heat number two. And away they go. And Joe Thompson's made it from the inside. And I think he's going to be joined round on the outside here by Jacob Hook. James Pearson's going to keep him honest, but Jacob Hook looks like he might make it stick. He's going to have to go wide. James Pearson trying the inside line. This is good racing between the two of them in behind Joe Thompson. But James Pearson it is who shuts Jacob Hook out. Joe Thompson shows away from James Pearson. Jacob Hook has got speed. Off the back is Jody Scott. So as they complete lap number two, James Pearson is quick. In behind Joe Thompson. Back in third is Jacob Hook. It's between these three who attempts with Jody Scott off the pace at the back. Joe Thompson it is though from James Pearson with one lap to go. What can James do with 226 metres left to go? He's got the bit between his teeth and he is hunting down the Gladiators number six. Jacob Hook is close in behind. If there's any slip-ups, James Pearson is going to try and throw it up the inside of Joe Thompson. But Joe is wise to that and keeps to that inside line. And Joe Thompson it is who takes the win in heat number two. A really good race between the two of them. James Pearson, who rode so well here for the Gladiators at the end of last season. But he's no match for Joe Thompson, who once again takes yet another heat number two around the Coliseum. He really does start meetings oh so well around here. And that was a really intelligent ride for Joe Thompson. He takes the win in red. 54.91 was the time. In second in white was James Pearson. Third in blue was Jacob Hook. And fourth in yellow was Jody Scott. So it's 4-2. So on the night, we're 7-5. And on aggregate, we are 63-39. to But we're going to see it out of the gate here in Joe Thompson. Off that inside, you can see there's a big gap between Joe and James there on one and two. James trying to stick towards the outside of his gate box. But as the tapes fly up, it's Joe who makes the gate. It looked here like Jacob Hook might follow him round. Jacob just stuck in the middle of the track while James kept to that inside line. And they kept each other on. It's going down the back. You can just see that Jacob is marginally in front of James Pearson. But he just has to leave that inside there as James pushes him out. And he makes it through to settle into second and it's a really good battle between Joe Thompson and James Pearson they kept each other honest but it wasn't to be there wasn't much room there for James to make the make the move but it's a really good start for Joe Thompson as we quickly on with heat number three and off the inside in white is Jason Edwards guesting for the Tigers tonight gate two in blue is Patrick Beck Gate number three, another guest for the Tigers tonight is Jordan Jenkins. And gate number four off the outside is that man, Dan Thompson, who was absolutely superb on Wednesday night. Fantastic night he had against Oxford, including, as I mentioned in the pits, that vital heat win over Sam Masters that really did make things interesting come the middle of the meeting. Plymouth gave it a real go on Wednesday night against a strong Oxford side at home. And they can be very proud of their efforts. And we're quickly going to be on with heat number three. Riders being caught up to the tapes now. Obviously, everybody here hoping Patrick Beck can really get to grips. He's obviously riding at different tracks every week now in the UK. Really nice lad, Patrick. Seemed in good form when we were down in the pits, smiling and looked very happy. But here we go then for heat number three. The green light will soon be put on by referee Barbara Hawley. And away we go. And Dan Thompson's made a good game, but so are the Tigers. And Jason Edwards off the inside flies round. 
and Jordan Jenkins will follow him through. This is a really good start to heat number three for the Glasgow Tigers. Patrick Beck gets awfully out of shape coming off Ben Four. That allows Dan Thompson through and it will be down to Dan now to try and chase the Tigers' guests. And out in front in white is Jason Edwards. Up his inside is Jordan Jenkins. They clash on Ben number three. Not quite sure what happened with Jason there. He seemed to lose a bit of momentum. And now Jordan's out of shape. And that's going to allow Dan Thompson through into second place. It's all happening here in heat number three. And with one lap to go, it's now a straight fight between Jason Edwards and Dan Thompson for the win. And Jason Edwards has an advantage over Dan. And it looks like he might be able to hold that advantage. He does have a little look in behind. And he's fairly comfortable out in front here. And Jason Edwards it is who will take the win in heat number three. And Glasgow respond with a 4-2 of their own. But it did get awfully tight between the two Tigers on Ben 3. Not much room for them both going for relatively the same line. Dan Thompson did manage to get through into second place. But Jason Edward it is who takes the win. A dramatic heat number 3. And it will be a win in white for Jason Edwards in a time of 54.24. Second in red was Dan Thompson, third in yellow Jordan Jenkins, and a fourth place in blue for Patrick Beck. Patrick just struggling a little bit there, but there's plenty of rides for him to come across the meeting, and that does level it back up at 9-9 on the night, as you see the mist forming over the trees, as I mentioned a little bit earlier on really are getting all sorts of weather conditions at the moment but here we go let's take it from the start of heat number three and you'll see on the inside jason edwards i was more interested in dan thompson and jordan jenkins on three and four completely missed jason edwards making a fly off gate number one and it was him who makes it to bend number one in front there he is he knows exactly where to put the bike and jordan jenkins follows him round. patrick back is there but dan thompson quickly We'll get up his inside as Patrick just gets out of shape there. You can see him coming off bend number three. And this is, looks like where the Tigers have it fairly comfortable with Jenkins and Edwards. Edwards leading Jenkins, but you can see here Jordan Jenkins just has a little bit more speed. And that's where they clash. Jason's just a little bit conservative going into bend three. And Jordan with the speed he'd built up, there was nowhere for them both to go. They did clash and Jordan just gets awfully out of shape coming into bend two. And that allows Dan Thompson through as we see Barbara Hawley up in the referee's box, Barbara, who was the referee on Wednesday night at Sandy Lane. So quick, quick reappearance with Plymouth meetings as we get ready for heat number four. Ben Barker back out on the track. Ben's already had one ride this evening, obviously about second place to Chris Harris with that track record time in heat number one. And he will be partnered here by Jacob Hook in blue who's making his way around to the start, but Ben, who will be coming off gate number four again, hoping to make it work this time. And here we go, Anders Rowe, as mentioned, just taking a year out of the championship this year, but riding for Kings Lynn as their rising star in the Premier League. And we'll take the lineup here in yellow. Off the inside is Jody Scott. Gate number two in blue is Jacob Hook. Gate number three in white is Anders Rowe. Gate number four in red with two points to his name already. It's Ben Barker, as mentioned, Anders Rowe, ex pool pirate from Weymouth. National League Riders Champion all the way back in 2019. Seems a long time ago now. But having a really good time with things at the moment, Anders. Riding in his Team GB Cavalos this evening. He'll be hoping to put on a show here at the Coliseum. Stepped in for Glasgow last night in that ill-fated meeting against Edinburgh that was abandoned after eight heats due to the rain. Everybody's got their fingers crossed that we make it past heat eight tonight. I'm fairly sure that we will. I don't think there's any doubt that we'll be able to get through tonight's meeting. And if I've put the jinx on that, then I do apologize to you all watching at home, but as mentioned, you are very welcome to join us here this evening. But here we go then for heat number four, 9-9 on the night, 67-41 to the Tigers on aggregate, tapes up and away we go. And Ben Barker is absolutely lightning off gate number four, and he takes the lead. Anders Rowe is slotted into second place in white, Jacob Hook is third in blue, and at the back of the field is Jody Scott. So Barker shows the way, but Anders Rowe is quick in second place, and he's gonna keep the Plymouth captain honest here as they head out into their second lap, and Barker shows the way from Rowe. There's about three to four bike lengths between them. Jacob Hook's in third, and Jody Scott just struggling at the back. Barker's out in front here, but Anders Rowe 
is going to try and explore a couple of lines here. Barker's keeping it tight towards the inside. Anders Rowe might have to try and be a little bit adventurous here with one lap to go. Jacob Hook is back in third. Barker continues to show the way and looks like he's going to go one better than he did in heat number one. Jacob Hook, to his credit, has kept tabs with Anders Rowe and isn't too far off the pace. But Ben Barker will notch up yet another win around the Coliseum. He had a couple last week and he gets one on the board early doors here this evening. And Ben Barker is back to looking his comfortable best on the motorbike. And that's all as Gladiators fans that we can ask for. And Ben Barker it is who gets the win in red. And he will be absolutely delighted with that following his tough night in Oxfordshire in midweek. Anders Rowe with a good ride into second place. 54.21, so not as quick as I first thought, but Ben takes the win in red. Second in white was Anders Rowe. Third in blue, Jacob Hook. And fourth in yellow was Jody Scott. So it's 4-2 on the... 4-2 in that heat. 13-11 on the night. 45-69 to 69 on the aggregate score. And we're going to take a word from our sponsors as we thank them for their support. As ever, a huge thank you to our sponsors here at Plymouth Gladiators for their continued support. Just trying to negotiate our way back down to the pit area to see who we can try and grab for a chat. Let's see who we can grab down in the pit, see what's going on. Catching up Anders Rowe, just trying to clean off his bike. Early doors, Jason Edwards and... Jordan Jenkins' bike, they'll be fairly happy, I would imagine, with their 4-2 heat advantage in heat number three, but would like it to not be as close for comfort as it was. Alfie Botel, you can see some work just going on to his bike. Alfie not out again until heat number six. Of course, it'll be interesting to see who joins him in heat number six with the rider replacement in operation. Patrick Beck there. Patrick will be looking to make some changes if he can to... Try and get just a little bit closer on the pace. His third ride here last week was a decent ride. And he'll be hoping to, to try and replicate that form if he can. As we have a look down deeper down the pits, you've got Jacob Hook down the end, Joe Thompson, Dan Thompson as well as mentioned. Apologies for that, just a few technical issues, but we are back live here from the Coliseum. You didn't miss a great amount. We're just taking a look at some work going on to Dan Thompson, Dwight Ben Barkham, with his trusty mechanic, Mark Simmons. Just trying to make some adjustments. Ben, who, as I say, I thought it looked a lot quicker with the naked eye, his last ride. Chris Harris, who set a pretty fearsome track record there, isn't he? 51.49, as mentioned, Josh Pickering's effort, 52.3 here at the start of July. That's some effort as we see some work going on to Dan Thompson's bike. Dan will be out here in heat number five. He'll be coming out of gate number one in red. The two minutes are on, so I'm going to make my way back up to the commentary gantry so we can get in position for the next one. As mentioned, it's 13-11 on the night. And the wonders of modern technology bring me back to the commentary gantry. Plenty of work going on to riders' bikes down there. You also saw plenty of riders trying to clean their, their race suits and get some mud out of their tyres. But we are about to crack on then with heat number five. As I say, those track grade, the track grading tonight will be kept as short and sweet as possible. All necessary track work will be taking place. 
but naturally with so much racing coming your way this evening here on Gladiators TV, we do want to crack on with things. And that man, the new track record holder, Chris Harris, is back out here. Chris will be riding in white. So we'll get the lineup when the riders are around at the tapes. As I try and make sense of my program after making an early mistake to it. Heat number four is early for me to make a mistake. So hopefully that's the last of them on my program. But here we go, the lineup for heat number five. Off the inside in red is Dan Thompson. Gate number two in yellow is Jack Smith. Gate number three in blue, Patrick Beck. And off the outside in white is Chris Bomber Harris. There's not a lot I can add about Chris Harris's career that several people haven't before me. There's not a lot he hasn't achieved in Speedway either. All the way back in 1998, that Conference League knockout cup win with St. Orsall. Who'd have thought all these years later he would still be turning out at such a high level for the Glasgow Tigers and what a job he's doing for his team already here tonight. We're about to get on the way with heat number five and away we go and Dan Thompson's made it from the inside. Now this will be interesting, but it was short lived because round goes Chris Harris. Patrick Beck has come down on bend number two. I think the race is going to have to be stopped. Patrick is still down. Chris sticking his hand out there just to acknowledge that the race will be stopped. Patrick is still on the ground. He's just getting to his feet now and just checking his machinery just to make sure that the, the Gladiator's rod is okay. He is just going to have a, a quick look at his bike there, but he came down on bend number two. We'll await for Barbara Hawley's decision as to what it what the decision will be but Patrick is back up on his feet and that is great to see and we're gonna lose the rider in yellow here Jack Smith Jack Smith has been excluded now it'll be interesting to see a, a replay of that as to see what will happen Patrick's making his way back around here we go I must be honest I was watching Chris Harris and Dan Thompson out in front I didn't quite see what happened but we'll see both of them make good gates from the inside and outside. They fly round Jack Smith, holding an inside line to Patrick Beck. It gets tight and ooh, mud guard to front wheel, maybe if we're being generous. But you saw Cammy Brown there on the pits phone. He's having a word with Barbara Hawley to try and find out her rationale. As I say, I didn't didn't see that coming myself, but. Cammy signaling there that, that might be the end of Jack Smith's chance of coming back out here in heat number five. <clears throat> Cammy looks aghast at the decision. It didn't look like there was a huge amount of contact. As I say, it might be mudguard to front wheel more than anything, but Jack Smith sort of perplexed himself on the camera there and the two minutes are thrown on straight away so Jack Smith is out excluded from heat number five the benefit to Cammy Brown here as I suppose his one remaining rider does happen to be Chris Harris so that will be a small saving grace to him but it won't be to Jack Smith who's a judge to have been the cause of the stoppage in bringing Patrick back down on bend number two. So Patrick gets a second chance at it. And he will be looking at it as he's definitely going to get a point here, you would think, providing mechanical gremlins. But he gets a second go at it and he will now make his way round to the start. Greeted by a wall of noise on bends one and two. Patrick, as he goes round, plenty of support in this evening, which is great to see. As I mentioned, Chris Harris normally does draw a crowd, particularly from across the Tamar Bridge in Cornwall. Chris still has a very loyal following from his Cornwall days, riding, as mentioned, for St. Orstall back in 1998 in Trelawney in the early 2000s. But here is your lineup for the rerun then of heat number five and off the inside is Dan, on red is Dan Thompson. He has no friend in gate number two with Jack Smith excluded. Gate number three in blue is Patrick Beck. And gate number four in white is Chris Harris. As I mentioned, I was watching their battle from the start. Dan made an absolute beauty of a start off gate number one. But it's probably fair to say that there's not many men who'd fly around in the outside like Chris Harris did, but Chris certainly made it stick. And he'll be looking to do the same again. 
And this is a really good test of where Dan Thompson is at the moment up against Chris Harris here in gate num in heat number five. And Dan's made another good one. And he gets to the inside. But once again, Chris Harris just flies around the outside as he does so many times on his visits around the Coliseum. And Chris is looking mighty fast out in front. He's already put such a gap between him and Dan Thompson. He's winding it on round Ben one and two going as wide as he can and Chris Harris really attacking the Coliseum this evening and he shows the way and he shows the way by a handsome six or seven bike lights here from Dan Thompson who is holding his own in second Patrick back in third but with one lap to go Chris Harris really is showing everybody how it's done how many track records is this man going to break tonight it does make you wonder whether he's going to try and break his own but Harris looking super smooth Super stylish out in front, and it's going to be another one for the Tiger skipper, who's looking in imperious form here at the Coliseum. He takes the win in white. Dan Thompson over the line in second in red. Third in blue was Patrick Beck. As mentioned, Jack Smith was excluded from the original running of this heat. And it is Harris who takes the applause as he comes round. Let's clock the time. Winning in white, Chris Harris for the time of 51.84. 51.84, Chris. That would have been comfortably a track record before his effort in heat number one. So winning white for Chris Harris. Second in red was Dan Thompson. Third in blue, Patrick Beck. And as mentioned, Jack Smith was excluded. And we will have a rider replacement coming up in heat number six. 16.14 on the night. 48 to 73 is the aggregate score. It's not getting as close as Gary May would have wanted, but for him, it's just about winning meetings. So let's take it from the start. Harris off white, off the outside. Dan Thompson, again, made a pretty decent effort, but Harris flew around his outside and he made it stick from there. And this is where Harris winds it on. We're not gonna quite see it there, but he really did throw the bike into Ben's one and two on that second lap. Really is a joy to watch Chris Harris when he flies around here. As we take a look down at the start line, you can see the, the riders gardening, trying to pack as much of the track in as they can to give them the best possible advantage off the start line. It's quite interesting, normally at the Coliseum these days, you only ever see one or two ruts on each gate, but already there's plenty of variety on each gate tonight. These two teams really did serve up a exciting meeting last year and I don't think we're going to be short of entertainment here this year. And Glasgow came out on top that night and they'll be hoping to come out on top once again. The mist has risen slightly. There's a look down the home straight. You can see me in the grey jumper behind Rob, our cameraman, to the top right. Give you a little wave at home just so you see what my vantage point is here this evening as Maximus rather rudely cuts across the shot, but he's going to wave to some of the families in the NHS stand. Maximus, who really does do, give a good job of creating a good atmosphere down here at the Coliseum. Great for the kids and the families. But we're just going to have a bit of an extra time here to allow Dan Thompson. He will be taking the rider replacement ride in red. There's also going to be a reserve switch coming up in heat number six with Jody Scott replacing James Pearson. There's a look at some of the faithful in the home straight on the NHS stand. As I said, some really good crowds have been in the last couple of meetings. Great to see. People want to watch competitive, exciting Speedway, and we're certainly getting it down here at the Coliseum this year. No meeting is the same as the next. It's fair to say we're having plenty of drama in meetings down here, and let's hope that our drama is over for tonight and all the excitement takes place on the track in a clean and safe manner, as you would expect with these two teams. But there is the two minutes for heat number six. And this will be a really good battle between Anders Rowe, who looked quick in his first ride in heat number four behind Ben Barker and Dan Thompson, who's got a, two seconds to his name. So far, Jody Scott's going to come out here in yellow, take his second ride of the evening. And he'll be followed around in blue by Alfie Botel. And Anders Rowe will be the third one into line. And then we've got Dan Thompson, who will take the ride in red. And the riders are going to make their way and round the to the tapes now. And for the in blue, We're just waiting for Dan Thompson, I believe. 
He'll be the last one out onto the track. So here is your lineup for heat number six. And off the inside in white will be Anders Rowe. Gate number two in red will be Dan Thompson. Gate number three in yellow will be Jody Scott. Gate number four in blue, Alfie Votel. And here is Dan Thompson. Making his way round to the start. He will have Anders Rowe as his partner on the inside. As I mentioned, plenty of people joining us up here on the viewing podium this evening. Hopefully try and grab one or two of them as the night progresses further. Good to hear both Cammy Brown and Gary May in such good form before the meeting started. Rarely does a day go by, it seems, these days with when Gary May isn't in good form, which is great to see. Obviously, the, the absence of Nico Cavati really is making him work hard and trying to find guests for these remaining meetings. Of course, while it looks tricky for the Gladiators to make the playoffs, they still have plenty to play for, and they also have plenty of opportunities to change other people's course in the playoffs. Still got to face Poole and Oxford at home. More on the two teams' fixture lists at the next interval but here we go they're coming into line for heat number six tapes up and away we go and Dan Thompson's made a good one but not as good as Alfie Votel off gate number four it's Anders Rowe who pushes him right but Alfie goes around the outside Alfie round the outside of Anders Rowe. Alfie just gets out of shape. That will allow Anders Rowe to fly back up the inside. It's going to be tight going into ends one and two, but Alfie makes it stick. Anders Rowe will keep him honest, and Dan Thompson's back in third. Anders trying to go up the inside. Now, he's got to be wary of a fast Dan Thompson back in third. At the back of the field is Jody Scott, but Alfie Botel is showing them the way here in heat number six in blue. Second in white is Anders Rowe. Third in red is Dan Thompson, and fourth in yellow is Jody Scott. But Alfie Botel with one lap to go shows them the way home and if anything has opened up his gap on Anders Rowe and if anything Dan Thompson has shortened his gap to Rowe he's going to have to have one last go but I'm not sure he's close enough. Alfie Botel going wide, that's the line to take and Alfie takes the win and takes another heat advantage to the Gladiators on the night. It's a 4-2 to the Gladiators and he gets a win on his second ride. Second in white will be Anders Rowe, third in red Dan Thompson, and fourth at the back is Jody Scott. There we have Alfie coming round to greet the home support. Gets a generous cheer and round of applause from the home crowd. 53.67 is the time, and here's your result of heat number six. First in blue is Alfie Botel, second in white Anders Rowe, third in red was Dan Thompson, and fourth in yellow Jody Scott. 4 2 makes it 20 points to 16 on the night, 52 to 74 on aggregate. And let's take a replay, and we'll see Alfie Botel fly off gate number four here in blue. Anders Rowe and Dan Thompson was where we thought the pace would come from early doors here, but Alfie gets an absolute flyer off the outside. Looks like Anders may well have the line, but Alfie Botel follows a similar line to what Chris Harris did early doors, and he flew around the outside. This is where he gets a little bit out of shape on Ben's three and four, but he manages to hold it as Anders puts him under pressure going into Ben's one and two, but that's a really good ride from Alfie Botel. There's Maximus's bike and his flag. He'll be flying around on that a little bit later on trying to entertain the crowd. The two minutes are on here for heat number seven. The riders making their way out onto the track. That mist hasn't disappeared. It's still lingering over the track. But we got Ben Barker and Joe Thompson out here for the Gladiators. And we have Jason Edwards and Jordan Jenkins, the guesting pair for the Tigers in white and yellow so as we approach heat number seven as i mentioned away from home this is where the gladiators were keeping it tight 24 18 it was at ashfield after this heat up there and then a couple of five ones really took the meeting away from the away side ben barker looks like he'll be the last one down to the start we're just hearing that it's going to be a track grade after this ben barker is coming back towards us. He doesn't look overly comfortable. Be interesting to know how long Ben's got left here. He's not overly comfortable. We sent Mark Simmons back into the pits. How much time has he got? That's what he's asking for. Less than a minute to go. 35 seconds to be exact. Ben might be struggling here depending on what the problem is. 
We can't quite see what's going on here, but Ben seemingly having machinery issues. Mark Simmons running out with a spare bike, but they can't seem to get going. Ben's going to have to make the switch. Is he? No, he's going to have to stick with his machinery by the looks of it, if he can get it going. And they're going to lift the tapes, and Ben, ben almost loses his head as he tries to go under them. But he makes it to the start, but it doesn't. Let's see how Ben's machinery goes here. He wasn't overly happy. The green light's on and away they go and Ben hasn't made the gate, but the one who has is Jason Edwards and he's going to be joined around the outside by Jordan Jenkins and it's Jordan this time who's going to take up the mantle. Now Ben is going wide. Ben is going very wide to try and get around Jason Edwards. My, 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 that's how you use the banking on Ben number four. Superb move by Ben Barker. He wasn't happy with his machinery beforehand. He's looking quicker as he tries to close down Jordan Jenkins. Just gets out of shape and he looks like he might clatter the air fence, but he gets away with it. Jenkins shows the way in yellow. He's got a comfortable lead now over Ben Barker in second. J uh, Jason Edwards is back in third. Ben really wrestling with his bike. He's losing his pace by the looks of it. He's not got the pace he had early doors. It's going to be a long final lap for Ben Barker. It looks like his bike's giving up on him and Jason Edwards has the speed around the outside. And Jason makes the move stick. Ben's going to try one last time. It's not going to be enough. Jason Edwards holds him off. And Jason Edwards gets the second place, but it's a win in yellow for jo Jordan Jenkins. Gets a big roar from the Glasgow fans there on the Colin Hill stand. Ben, whose bike really was poorly towards the end of that, he's not happy with his machinery. But it's a really good ride from Jordan Jenkins out in front. Jordan gets the win in yellow. 52.49 for him. Second in white was Jason Edwards to get the maximum for the Tigers. That levels it up on the night. 21 apiece and it's 53.79. So we're back to the status quo we started with before the meeting. We're going to have a track race, but let's take a race replay first. And you're going to see Ben, after all that stress, he... He doesn't get to the gate, get to Ben one first. Jason Edwards it is who makes it. Jordan Jenkins goes around the outside. And as this race progresses, we're just gonna see Ben just wrestle with his bike. This is a superb move, by the way, off Ben's three and four to get around the outside of Jason Edwards. We don't see enough riders trying that outside line on that new banking in place. But any minute now, you're gonna see, you're gonna see Ben lose it there coming off Ben four. And this is where you're going to see, just watch Ben's right hand in a minute. He's trying to get as much power out of the bike as he can, but he can feel it going from underneath him. And this is probably where Jason Edwards senses that he's got a chance. Ben really wrestling with his machinery, trying to get life out of the bike, but it is so tricky for him. And this is where Jason Edwards just flies on by as if he's standing still. And it's a comfortable 5-1 for the Tigers. Let's get a word from our sponsors, and then we'll head into the pits. Just getting some track grading going on. Cammy Brown just going to issue some instructions. We're going to see a reserve switch here. James Pearson's going to come out in yellow. He looks ready to go. Chris Harris just going to give him some words of wisdom. He'll be joined here by Jack Smith in white as we head into the Plymouth pits. And there's a perplexed looking Ben Barker at what happened to his machinery there. Really was quite a dramatic loss of pace. And you could see before the race, Ben was struggling. He wanted to try and get a replacement bike out there to help him but he knew listening to him here he knew that the bike was going he knew the power was drifting away from him and it just didn't last the four laps and unfortunately Jason Edwards was able to fly around the outside as we take a look at the Edwards at the Thompson boys even Joe and Dan Joe with one win to his name so far and Dan with a couple of with a second place in heat number three a second place in heat number five and that one point behind Alfie Botel in heat number six. Alfie who will be out here with Jacob Hook in blue, we presume, unless there is a re 
a switch from Gary. But we'll see as, as the night progresses how, how long that takes. There is a bit of drizzle falling in the air. It is very thick above us here. Have to say the humidity hasn't dropped and the cloud cover is going nowhere. If anything, it's getting a lot more dense above us. As we take a look back into the tiger, oh, the as we take a look into the tiger's pit. Apologies for Ben Trigger's patriotism towards the red car bears. If you heard that on the stream, the gladiators still have to go up against the bears once more this season. Jason Edwards in the background. He'll be happy with that five-one there with Jordan Jenkins. A lot less dramatic between the two this time around than what it was in heat number three. Jack Smith and James Pearson ready to go out and try and cement some momentum here for the Tigers. Alfie Botel getting ready to go. The two minutes are on for heat number eight. So let's make our way back up to the commentary gantry as we prepare to get into the second half of tonight's fixture. And James Pearson is the first one out onto the track along with Jack Smith, but we'll get up to the gantry very shortly and get back underway with heat number eight. And back we are on the gantry. Heat number eight, vital heat this, as mentioned up at Ashfield earlier in the season. And this was where the meeting was taken away from the Gladiators. Gary will be hoping that he's the one who can take it away from the Tigers here. And we are going to have a reserve switch. It will be Joe Thompson coming in in blue to replace Jacob Hook in this one. So it's Alfie and Joe against Jack Smith and James Pearson. It is, remember, in yellow, not Jody Scott. As the crowd try to get behind their boys, it's level 21 apiece. Off the inside in blue will be Joe Thompson. Gate number two in yellow will be James Pearson. Gate number three in red, Alfie Botel. Gate number four in white will be Jack Smith. So here we go then. <clears throat> Heat number eight, Jack Smith yet to score a point. He'll be hoping to do so here. Another quick track grade from Mark, just trying to get the track back into good nick. It really wasn't good nick when I turned up a lot earlier this afternoon when the sun was shining. But as I say, that mist is just lingering around the Coliseum. Temperature still hasn't dropped though. Humidity is still very high. And the action is about to ramp up a notch on track as we get to halfway of this Cab Direct Championship fixture between the Plymouth Gladiators and the Glasgow Tigers. Heat number eight is upon us. And away they go. And Alfie Botel has made it. And he's going to be followed through by Joe Thompson. And this is just what Gary May would have wanted. James Pearson has pulled up at the back with mechanical issues. And Alfie Botel really attacking the Coliseum. Shows the way out in front. He leads from his partner in blue, Joe Thompson. And down in white is Jack Smith, who will remount. The bike has kept going, but he is now gone without a chance, you would think, as long as the Gladiators can stay on their bikes. And out in front, Alfie Botel and Joe Thompson know they will see Jack Smith. They know that they don't have to do anything special here to bring home the maximum and really get this good crowd going as Alfie makes his way round to Ben 1 and 2. Jack Smith just about to take the final lap flag. But meanwhile, the two Gladiators are about to take the checkered flag. And it will be a 5-1 to the home team, to the roars of the Plymouth crowd. It's a 5-1 to the Gladiators from Alfie Botel and Joe Thompson. And Jack Smith will come round to collect his point. He did have a moment there on Ben's one and two. Coming to grief, James Pearson, who retired from the race early doors. And Jack Smith makes his way off track. But here come the maximum boys for the Gladiators. Alfie Botel standing up to take the acclaim of the crowd. Back-to-back -back wins for Alfie. And a win and a second place in blue for Joe Thompson. 53.93 was the time and a maximum for the Gladiators. First in red, Alfie Botel. Second in blue, Joe Thompson. Third in white, Jack Smith. And James Pearson never made it past bend number two, unfortunately. And let's take the replay then of heat number eight. That 5-1 to the Gladiators just opens them up a little bit of a buffer on the night. But you see Alfie get across 
James Pearson there and Joe Thompson. And unfortunately, that's where James Pearson's race was run. The bike never went further, actually, than halfway round bend one. And Joe's out in front of Jack Smith in second place. Jack, this is where he comes to grief, but we won't see it as we cut the replay short. Neil Vatcher, head of the British Youth Series. He's obviously here to see the British Youth 250cc Championships round two later on. Plenty of good young riders going to be taking part in that. So do stick around on the live stream once we're done here with the championship action. Stars of the future will be taking to the Coliseum. There's a star of present day in Maximus, just strutting his way up the home straight, ordering a member of the track staff back to his position. Maximus is the king around here, and he's going to make sure that the member of the track staff makes it back to his position. We almost need a bit of Benny Hill music going on here. Maximus giving chase. And the track staff are back in place. So that opens up a four-point lead on the night for the Gladiators. 26-22, 58-80 is the aggregate score. Unfortunately, it looks like Cammy Brown will get his wish at least to get that aggregate point. Always looked like a tall order for the Gladiators after that tough night, tough night at Ashfield. I can promise you it's not quite that dark as that light above the home straight suggests, but it isn't bright here at the Coliseum. I think we will be dancing in the moonlight a little bit later on. Conditions really aren't playing ball for a light finish this evening. Let's take a look at some gate stats, and it really is gates. Gate four is the place to be. 50% of all wins coming from gate four with four wins and 17 points. Gate number three with two wins and 11 points. The graveyard gate this evening is gate number two. No wins, just seven points from gate number two and two wins off the inside with 13 points coming from it as well. So a relative spread, you would say, as we take a look at the gantry behind us. As I say, the viewing platform very well populated this evening. It'll be a lot fuller when the riders come out here for heat number nine. We're going to see Dan Thompson and Patrick Beck up against Anders Rowe. <coughs> And I presume it will be James Pearson. I haven't heard that there's going to be a reserve switch. I guess that's why we had a little bit of a longer gap between races. And there is Patrick Beck, who's going to make it round to the start. He will be off the inside gate number one here. The graveyard gate for Anders Rowe. He's got it all to do from there, you would seem, as those stats suggest. Dan Thompson will come off gate number three. Let's take the line up then for heat number nine. Off the inside in blue is Patrick Beck. One point. Pay two to his name. Anders Rowe is off gate number two in white with four points to his name. Dan Thompson, gate number three, five points to his name. And James Pearson in yellow will come off the outside. Just the two points to his name so far. Obviously didn't get overly far in our previous race. Heat number eight. The timer is on for James. Less than 50 seconds to go now for him to make it round to the start, but he will join us. <coughs> I think he's going to try a little bit of limbo. Similar to Ben Barker, under he goes. James makes it round to gate number, gate number four. So, Patrick back off the inside in blue. Anders row off gate number two in white. Gate number three in red, Dan Thompson. Gate number four in yellow will be James Pearson. 26-22 on the night. 58-80 to 80 on aggregate. And let's see what heat number nine will throw our way. The start marshal will move out of the way. The green lights are on. And from here, it looks like a fairly even break. Patrick back across the inside of Anders Rowe. Well, well, well. Here we go then. Dan Thompson it is who takes the lead. Patrick back is slotted into second place now. Can he hold it there? Anders Rowe will be quick back in third and James Pearson is at the back. This is a good test of Patrick Beck with Anders Rowe who's going to throw the kitchen sink and all at him here. But as we complete lap number two, Dan Thompson shows the way in red from Patrick Beck in blue. Third in white is Anders Rowe and at the back of the field is James Pearson. This is just what Patrick Beck will need for confidence with one lap to go. Dan Thompson shows the way. Now, Patrick Beck, it's on to you to bring home back-to-back -back maximums. Anders Rowe is trying. 
with everything he's got to get by. I'm not sure it's going to be enough. And off band number four, listen to that roar. Patrick Beck and Dan Thompson bring home the maximum for the Gladiators. It's back to back five ones. Anders Rowe couldn't get past Patrick Beck and he has enjoyed every moment of that. Dan Thompson it is who takes the win and congratulations to him. But just look what this means to Patrick Beck, a big punch of the air. A huge moment for him, he gets that paid win. Second place in a 5-1, Gary May is the first to congratulate him and what a moment that is. 53.41 for Dan Thompson, we shouldn't forget that he took the win. Anders Rowe was in third, there is your full result of winning red for Dan Thompson. Second in blue, Patrick Beck. Third in white, Anders Rowe. Fourth in yellow was James Pearson. 31-23 on the night, 63-81 on aggregate. But the story here is the rider in blue. Off that inside, he was the first to be set and we're gonna see as the tapes rise here, he knows exactly what to do. He cuts off Anders Rowe. Anders can't get to that inside first. Watch Patrick here, thank you very much. I'm getting to the inside. That allows Dan Thompson to slingshot around the outside. And if truth be told, Anders Rowe never really put Patrick under enough pressure to get by. And Patrick knew where to put the bike. This was a superb ride from him. He's been short of confidence in his first couple of rides. As I said, last week, that third ride was so good from him. He looked a lot more comfortable on the bike. And we're going to see Joe Thompson out here in red with Alfie Botel. There's Ben Barker. I'm sure he'll be delighted with his teammate Patrick Beck getting... That second place in the 5 1. It's only 18 points now. That gap between the Tigers and the Gladiators. With six heats to go. There's still a chance, believe Gladiators fans. Hopefully, you're enjoying this at home. It really is a decent meeting so far. As I said, you really do have to feel for Cammy Brown and the, the Tigers promotion with the, the bad luck they've been dealt with this fixture tonight. Matajivacic and Leon Flint being away on the continent on international duty and then a couple of injuries. But let's take the lineup for heat number 10 in blue is Alfie Botel off the inside. Seven paid eight for him. Gate number two in yellow is Jordan Jenkins. Gate number three in red is Joe Thompson. And off the outside is Jason Edwards in white. Can they do it again? Can they get a hat trick of five ones? That really will raise the proverbial roof at the Coliseum if they can. There's always hope in sport. And while there are races to come, there are chances to be had for the Gladiators. And it is all on Alfie Botel and Joe Thompson here. They brought home a five one in heat number eight. Can they do it again? Off these gates. That time it was Joe off the inside and Alfie off three. Can they do it again off one and three? Start Marshall giving the riders time at the tapes. He'll be urging them to get on with it very soon. There he is, calling them into line. In the context of the night, this is a big heat here. Cammy Brown won't want the gladiators to get too far ahead because then it does just show a seed of doubt in the mind. But here we go, heat number 10 on the night. Tapes rise and away they go and as they head into event number one, Alfie Botel makes it. Joe Thompson has to go very wide. Jordan Jenkins throws it up the inside of Alfie. A really good move to, move to take the lead and Jordan Jenkins shows the way in yellow. Alfie Botel is sliding to second place in blue. Third in white is Jason Edwards, who's trying the inside line, but Alfie goes wide and generates more speed. And at the back of the field is Joe Thompson. What can he do from there? But Jordan Jenkins is showing the way. This will be a win off heat number two, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan Jenkins shows the way from Alfie Botel. Third in white is Jason Edwards, and he's putting Alfie under all sorts of pressure. At the back of the field is Joe Thompson. They've got one lap to go. Can Alfie hold off Jason Edwards here as Jenkins and Edwards go for another maximum themselves? Alfie generating the speed by going wide, but out in front, it is Jordan Jenkins who'll take the heat win in heat number 10. He wins in yellow. Second in blue is Alfie Botel. Third in white, Jason Edwards. And at the back of the field in red was Joe Thompson. 
Well, 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 this gladiate, this Tigers guest pairing really is proving some great entertainment and vindicating Cammy Brown's decision to call them in as Jordan comes round to take the acclaim of the crowd in a time of 53.17 in heat number 10. He takes the win in yellow. Second in blue is Alfie Botel. Third in white was Jason Edwards. And fourth in red was Joe Thompson. 33-27 on the night. 65-85 on aggregate. That aggregate score now back up to 20 points. Cammy Brown just studying his program as we prepare. And just what he needs now is Chris Harris to come out in the next one. And he'll be going up against Ben Barker. He'll be hoping his bike gremlins have been sorted. But we are we are going to have a little bit of a pause in proceedings as Joe, Ed, Joe Thompson will take back-to-back -back rides. We just take a look at Patrick back with his mechanic. Keep it as it is, he'll say. Keep that bike in the position it's in because that was a superb ride in heat number nine. Good to see some families in the Coliseum this evening. Summer holidays. Not quite summery weather, unfortunately, this evening, but still great to see so many families in attendance tonight. They will get to see the stars of the future once we are finished. There is a stripped down Ben Barker bike. Mark Simmons will be getting to work on that. There's Dan Thompson. Curiously looking at his machinery, thinking how can I eke a little bit more performance out of it as we take a look at some gate stats for you once again and there it is that win for Jordan Jenkins in yellow notches up a win for gate number two all the wins though coming from those outside gates three wins off gate number three four wins off gate number four two wins off gate number one and that solitary win off gate number two there's the rider scores then so far Alfie Botel nine plus one for him Dan Thompson with eight from four rides Patrick Beck with three with two bonus from his three rides so far. Ben Barker, six from three, a vast improvement from his performance on Wednesday night. Joe Thompson with five played six, and Jacob Hook with two third places to his name. 33 to the Gladiators. Well, no surprise that Chris Harris is on six from two. Jack Smith with one point from his two completed rides, but three program. Jason Edwards on six paid seven in th of, at number three. Jordan Jenkins with back to back wins puts him onto seven points. Anders Rowe is on five from three. James Pearson with two from three. And Jody Scott with three fourth places to his name. As I said, that does leave us with a progressive score on the night of 33 27. Dan just making some adjustments to his machinery. There you can see Anders Rowe just trying to explain to a member of the Glasgow team just what he can do to try and wrestle back this on the night score. As I say, it does look like the aggregate point may well have slipped away from the Gladiators now. Could have done with a 5-1 early doors. Gary May just talking to his captain. Robbed around the clerk of the course is down there as well. This is how you do it, Ben. You get out of the gate and you win the race. Good words, Gary. And Ben hops off. As Mark Simmons brings out the other bike. Ben's going to try and fire that one up and see if there's any life in it. Ben's just checking that other bit of machinery. I presume that's the one that's had issues. And he's quickly deposited that as the two-minute time allowance is put on them for heat number 11. An important one you feel for the Tigers. Chris Harris back out here. We'll be looking at their captain and talisman to fire in yet another heat win for himself. The Gladiators here with Ben Barker in red. Joe Thompson in blue. And if Ben's task going up against Chris Harris wasn't hard enough, he's also got to come off gate number two and have Harris on his inside. Mark Simmons jogs round to Ben here on Ben's one and two just to... Have a little look at his machinery. Hopefully there's plenty of life in it this time. And Joe Thompson will come round in blue and make it a quartet at the starting gate. The two gladiators will join the Tigers down at the start. As I say, with six points in it on the night, an important Heat 11 coming up. Chris Harris will be off the inside in white. We'll give you that lineup very shortly. Indeed, there's Patrick Beck, as mentioned beforehand. He was in good form beforehand. Imagine how he feels now with that paid win 
in his previous ride. Off the inside with the maximum is Chris Harris in white. Second, uh, gate number two even in red is Ben Barker. I'm presuming what's going to happen here. Gate number three in yellow is Jack Smith. And off the outside in blue will be Joe Thompson. The two Cornish men will fly off that inside. And Staffordshire's own Jack Smith will have to contend with Nuneaton's own Joe Thompson off the outside. Four British riders at the tapes for heat number 11. The tapes rise and away we go. And Ben Barker it is who's made the jump on Harris. Now then, what can Bomber do as Jack Smith just cuts off Joe Thompson? Joe's going to have to go around the outside of Jack if he can make it stick. It's the two Cornish money who are going to do battle. Ben gets out of shape. Harris is flying in behind. He's going wide. He's got the speed. Can Barker hold him off? Harris is going to go wide up the banking. Can he make it work? Is he going to try and go around the outside? He is. Ben's wise to it. He cuts to the outside. Meanwhile, at the back, Joe Thompson's trying to put pressure on Jack Smith. Chris Harris is coming. He's only got a lap and a half to go. Can Ben Barker hold on in red? Harris in white. 226 metres between the Cornishmen. This is Cornish pride on the line. Harris goes wide. Barker's going to have to defend to the inside. Harris is going to go wide one last time. Joe Thompson's trying to get up the inside of Jack Smith at the back. Barker takes the win. Joe Thompson and Jack Smith to the line. It's tight. It's tight. Jack Smith comes down at the end of the race. Barker takes the win. We'll have to get the results at the back. But Ben Barker gets one over on his fellow Cornishman. Truro's own doing battle. And Barker takes the win in red. Second in white was Chris Harris. Harris tried absolutely everything, but it meant a lot to, ha to Barker, who gets the better of Harris. Here's the result for third. Smith on the outside, just, I bet, just from Joe Smith, who gave it absolutely everything. And we are about to get that result. Barker takes the win in red. 54.10. Ben's not quick, but he's doing the job. Harris in second. Third in yellow, as I suspected, was Jack Smith. 36 to 30 on the night. Harris in second in white. Smith in third in yellow. Fourth at the back was Joe Thompson, who gave it everything. And let's go down to the pits and see if we can get some words from the riders. See Cammy Brown on the phone once again as we start to make our way down towards the pits area. See who we can try and grab for a chat. We'll see if we can get hold of somebody as we make our way down. Cammy Brown in conversation with Jack Smith, who did come to grief at the end of that race. Jason Edwards will be out here in white alongside James Pearson. As we take a look, Jack Smith did hold on from a charging Joe Thompson at the end there. Cammy Brown just gonna try and grab a word with the referee here. Not quite sure what that's about. We've got Dan Thompson and Jacob Hook gonna be out in the next one for the Gladiators. I think they're just querying the, the race result. It was a three all. At least that's what we heard on the Sound system, maybe Cammy Brown thought otherwise. Take a look into the Tigers pit. Six points down on the night. Jason Edwards, who, as I say, rode so well for the Gladiators on Wednesday at one. Did well as we take a look round. A lot going on here in the Tigers pits at the moment. So we'll try not to get in their way if we can. Obviously trying to bridge that six-point gap if they can. A lot of work going on to Chris Harris's bike. Harris also with a yellow helmet in his hand. I do wonder if we might be about to see a tactical sub played by Cammy Brown here. Jordan Jenkins helping out on the work going on on Chris Harris's bike. And we are going to see a tactical sub. I've just heard over the tannoy here. So Chris Harris will be out in yellow. A tactical sub is going to be played by Cammy Brown. Just to throw another twist into the mix and make it just that little bit harder for Dan Thompson and Jacob Hook. Dan will be looking to notch up a win if he can. <clears throat> Having a solid night so far, but he will have to deal with two fast riders here. Dan will be coming off two. 
with Harris off the inside and Jason Edwards off gate number three. There's Gary May. He must be happy with his six-point lead. Just going to issue a quick word with Dan. We'll see if we can grab Gary just for 60 seconds. Gary, yeah. six-point lead so far. You must be pretty happy with how things are going. Yeah, I am. You know, we just I couldn't believe it myself. You know, the boys are really riding well and, uh, you know, six points up. Obviously, they're putting Chris Harris in now as a tax sub and all we need is another 10 points and uh, I'm trying to work out in the programme where I can get it from, you know, and... Uh, you know, I thought they might put Harris in 14 when, you know, with uh, Jenkins to go for a 5-1 because I'm, I'm looking a bit vulnerable in 14. But, you know, he's the manager, not me. So um, that's what I go for. But, no, I'm happy with the boys. They, they're, they're digging deep and they're going well for it, you know what I mean? I saw you with the very quickly. I saw you with the first one out to congratulate Patrick Beck. That would do the world for his confidence, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, he gated and he held it and, um, you know, come off a of gate one, which is all right, you know, but... You know, do I keep him in his next one or what? Do you know what I mean? That's the thing he's off a gate for, but I'll, I'll think about it. All the best, Gary. Thanks for joining us. Let's head up to the gantry. The riders are heading out onto the trucks then for heat number 12. We'll make our way back up with Harris out here. Two minutes now flies on. And we're back. 68-88 is the aggregate score. And here we go. Chris Harris off the inside in yellow, taking that tactical switch. Gate number two in red was Dan Thompson. Gate number three in white is Jason Edwards. And off the outside in blue is Jacob Hook. An important heat number 12, Cammy Brown rolling the dice in conversation with young Ben Trigger, Plymouth's very own, but Red Cars number seven, who's spannering for Jacob Hook here this evening. In conversation with him, but the riders are at the tapes then for heat number 12. Can Thompson and Hook hold off Harris and Edwards? That is the question that lies ahead in a huge heat number 12 in context of the fixture on the night. Two points are on the line, don't forget, as well as that one aggregate bonus point. But here we go, the green light is on, and away they go, and Dan Thompson's made a good game, but Chris Harris has made an even better one off the inside. And Jason Edwards has followed him round, and Jason Edwards and Chris Harris it is then who slot into the first and second places with Dan Thompson back in third. Jacob Hook goes very wide off Ben's four and almost hits the fence, but Chris Harris riding wide. He takes a look over to see where his teammate is, Jason Edwards, and Jason will keep to the inside. Harris will go wide. This is where you're going to see team riding at its very best. But Dan Thompson is quick back in third, and he's going to put Jason Edwards under all sorts of pressure, and there isn't a huge amount between them as they come out of Ben number two. So with one lap to go, Harris continuing to look for his partner, Jason Edwards, and they show the way. There's not a lot of room for Dan Thompson to get through. This is almost perfect team riding from the Tigers and just what Cammy Brown would have wanted. And Chris Harris and Jason Edwards are the maximum men for the Tigers. Harris takes the win in yellow, a second in white for Jason Edwards, a third in red for Dan Thompson. At the back was Jacob Hook. But as Gareth mentioned on the Tannoy, if ever you wanted to bring in a tactical switch in any meeting, you want to bring in Chris Harris. And it is he who takes the win in heat number 12. He comes around to take the applause of the crowd. And it's a win for Chris Harris in yellow. 54 flat for Bomber. And he takes the win. So there's your result of heat number 12. It's a 5-1 to the Tigers. A win in yellow for Chris Harris. Second in white is Jason Edwards. Third in red, Dan Thompson. And fourth in blue was Jacob Hook. So 37-35, 69-93 on the night. On aggregate even. Been interesting to score if it was 69-93 on the night. I'm not sure we'd have enough daylight to finish the meeting if that was the case. But there's the Tigers heading back into the pits. Chris Harris will be delighted to get one back. Having lost his maximum to Ben Barker in heat number 11. Just in deep conversation with Jason Edwards. Jason really is the, the perfect guest that you want, I think. He rode brilliantly for Plymouth on Wednesday night. There is Ben Barker. Stood to the side of us, taking his glasses off. I'm not, I'm not sure whether that's going to help him see the track any better. But we're going to try and grab a word with Ben if we can. Ben... Um, 
couple of wins to your name. What was the bike troubles you had a little bit earlier in the meeting? Yeah, I had it in my second ride. Um, still... Let's try, let's, let's try yeah, again. Yeah, so I had it in my second ride. I'm not really sure what the problem is. It's an electrical problem, I feel. So um, we changed one part of it. Still didn't work. So I had to jump on the spare bike for that one. And beating Bomber in heat number 11, two proud Cornishmen going up against each other. Real fight between the two of you, but you were quite comfortable by the end. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's all about winning races. You know, it's not about beating Bomber, it's about winning as a team. So obviously it's always nice, um, but it's, it's just one of them things. We're in a battle, you know, we're, we're, we're in a tough meeting. Um, um, we need to get the meeting done and won before uh, Heat 15. And, you know, certainly, as you say, winning as a team, losing as a team, and seeing Patrick Beck get that 5-1 with Dan Thompson and Heat number 9, as team captain, seeing it, the new signing get that maximum with Dan must have given you a huge sense of pride. I didn't see it. <laughs> um, I've been working frantically on the bikes, making changes and trying to get my number one bike going, but we didn't quite manage it, so we, we had to persevere with it, then make the right change on the second bike. To, to make sure that we're as competitive. So, you know, it's obviously nice to see Patrick out winning, oh, getting paid wins. And that's what we need, you know. Um, you know, Mark down here at Plymouth, if you ask me, he's building for the future, bringing in a rider like that, um, which is, there's a bike, look, there's one of them on bits, <laughs> but, you know, we're just trying to make changes to get that one up and running. Um, but we've got to do what we've got to do, you know. Um, but like I say, Patrick having a paid win, that's great for the team. And heading into these final three heats of the night then, two point advantage at this point. Obviously, unfortunately, the fat lady has cleared her throat on the aggregate point. But we know coming into this final stretch of fix, it's just about winning fixtures, building momentum. You never know where it might take you in sport, but it's all about taking as much positivity as we can into the winter, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, listen, we're not out of playoffs, you know. We've got to keep winning at home. And we, you know, there's a couple of away tracks, I feel, that anything can happen out, you know, Red Car and Workington. I mean, we haven't really been to Workington, many of us. But red car for sure, we all know our way around it and we all enjoy it. So, you know, they're not as strong as we are at reserve, um, which is a big thing. And I, I, meant, I remarked last week and I remarked early doors tonight, you seem a lot more comfort, comfortable in your body back on the bike. How are you feeling physically after all the problems you had at the start of the year? I'm feeling good, but mentally as well. I'm struggling at the moment. And that is all due to lack of meetings. You know, I'm, I'm trying you know, hard to get in the rhythm. Um, but it's one of them things where we keep going and uh, we'll keep plugging away and uh, hopefully next year we'll have two teams to ride for and obviously when I'm riding a bike, you know, I like to think I'm uh, a lot better at, at, and good to watch so it's just bike time. And as you say, you have do have those couple of really important away fixtures to come. It was a really spirited effort on Wednesday night at Oxford, just going down by the 12 points. That's not an insurmountable lead when they come down here at the end of the month. But it's just four points is the deficit on aggregate at Workington and a red car. If we can get that guest situation sorted in number one, you must really fancy it with the way some of these riders are going at the moment. Yeah, you know, I, that's, you're totally right. Um, but it's tough. Listen, there's no two ways about it. It's tough to go to any of these tracks. This league's tough, but we've got to go there with the right attitude. So go there to win races. Um, you know, it's just at the moment, like I say, it's tough with us. I mean, I was talking to someone the other day, and we, I've had like 15 or 16 meetings all season, and these guys are having that every month. They just got that. They just goes to show the difference, you know. Like the rock, rock, all of the one to four, in, all of the one to five. One to six, all of the one to seven at Paul riding more than one league. And it's no wonder they've only lost one meeting without super hate, isn't it? You know what I mean? But that just goes to show. Um, and then some of them are riding in three or four leagues. Three leagues, you know? So, but we've just got to keep plugging away and uh, we'll be there or thereabouts. And we're seeing now on the, on the live stream, the riders are going around collecting for the Benevolent Fund. We obviously know you're such a keen supporter of the Benevolent Fund meeting every year. Just how important, just explain to us at home for the Glasgow fans, Blue fans, any other Speedway fans watching at home, just how important is the Benevolent Fund to the riders? There isn't any more important cause in, in British Speedway um, that, than the Benevolent Fund. You know, it's more important than, no, I shouldn't say this, but it, it's, it's as important as the bums on seats in the terraces because some of these guys are, uh, have ended their career on these bikes and the help that they receive for, from the Benevolent Fund is, is absolutely second to none. Um, and they went out of their way to help me when my son was really poorly. 
Um, I know he's at home watching now. So hope all the boys had a great holiday. I know they they got home today from Spain, so they're all um, at home watching tonight. Different climate in Spain than it is here this evening. Just one final word. Obviously, we got a decent crowd in this evening. We had a great support at Oxford on Wednesday night. Great to see some Glasgow fans down here as well. But numbers have really increased this season, haven't they? And it's great, a good atmosphere at home. Yeah, it is. That's it. But we needed to step it up again. Um, you know, it's about trying to get British Speedway back on the map. Um, and, and, and for me, you know, I'd love to see another 200 people in the Coliseum um, every week. Look how cool the racing is. It's small, it's tight, it's furious racing. I mean, the races are over in 52, 53 seconds. You know, you're riding a bike with no brakes. What, what's a more big of a thrill than that? Certainly is. Ben, we'll let you go because we know you've got to prepare for Thank you. number 13 in Thank a minute. You. Thanks for joining us. Ben Barker, Plymouth captain. As I say, great to see Ben in much better spirits than he was at the end of Wednesday night's meeting. He really was down with his performance. It really hurts Ben when, you know, although he's the captain, he says we win and lose as a team. It really hurts him when his, his own performance just doesn't complement the rest of the team as well as he would have liked. You can hear behind me the bikes are firing up for the 250cc round two. That will come to you at the end of tonight's fixture. We have a number of British Speedway's next up and coming stars. You got me on camera once again, give you a little wave. You've got Rob next to me doing a sterling job with the main camera as I just try and sort out my program that I did mess up a little bit earlier in the night just to tell you who's coming up later. We've got six riders taking part in the 250cc a little bit later on. we got Cooper Russian, um, who's had a really good start to his year. More on him a little bit later when we get into it. Seth Norman, Ollie Bins, Charlie Southwick, Archie Rolf, and making his 250cc championship debut will be young Devon rider Jaden Bailey. So it'll be great to see how those six go. Six heats and a final coming your way once we are finished here in the Cab Direct Championship. But we have so much more action to come tonight. This result is far from done on the night. Two points are on the line. And for both teams, those two points could be the difference. So we take a look down at the start. You can see, as I mentioned earlier, Normally it's just one or two ruts on each starting gate, but tonight we're seeing a lot of variety on each gate. Gate number four is usually the one where they just come out the same rut, but we are seeing a lot of work being put in by the riders when they get to the start. And as I mentioned, those two points that are up for grabs tonight could be all the difference in what's to come in a frantic end to the season. Both these sides, Glasgow have only had 10 completed meetings, would you believe? Plymouth with only 11. Glasgow obviously postponed last night when the score was 25-16 to Edinburgh. That's a deep rut there. You can see on bend number four, that seems to be the chosen place to come out from. But as I mentioned, Glasgow have only finished 10 meetings. They've, they're here tonight with a 26-point aggregate lead. They've got to race against Edinburgh at home on the 14th. Then they go to Oxford before Oxford head north of the border around August bank holiday weekend. And then they are home to Redcar at the end of the month where they try and overturn a 10-point deficit. So the maximum number of points, if Glasgow were to win all their meetings, would be 27. You would think that would be comfortably enough to get them into the playoffs. For Plymouth, it's a little bit more complex with 11 meetings. As I say, this, this big deficit, they've got to try and overturn against Glasgow. They're, they're four points down against Redcar. That comes up on the 23rd of August. Poole are in town then on the 24th of August. It's a 20 point deficit to them. And then Oxford come here at the end of the month on the 31st, a 12 point deficit there. However, there is also, as Ben mentioned, the fixture at Workington to be squeezed in there. I think Gary mentioned it may well be the Sunday after Poole and Redcar, which is a lot of air miles that are gonna be clocked up by the Gladiators. But if they wanna make the playoffs, they're gonna to have to get a quick move on. If we take a look at the gate stats, four wins off the outside gate, three wins off gate number three, two wins off gate number two, and three wins off gate number one. So as the meeting progresses, we're actually seeing that the track is sort of evening out a little bit more, and we're seeing that it's becoming a lot more of an even spread, which will make Plymouth's choice in heat number 15 that a little bit harder, you would imagine, given that there's no longer one outstanding gate to choose from as the start marshal puts a little sprint on across the track. You see him disappear off to the left but you would like you would think at the moment looking at the league table pool at top on 28 just that one defeat to them so far and one super heat defeat for them scunthorpe who went down to the gladiators 
here last weekend. They're second on 23, Oxford. Virtue of that win on Wednesday are in third on 20. Then it becomes interesting. Red car are fourth on 14. Workington, who are in action at the moment, away to Berwick. They're fifth on 14. They'll be targeting to try and climb up into the playoff places. Eric Riss and Simon Lambert guesting for the Comets there as we see Maximus trying to keep the crowd entertained on the home straight. The riders have been around collecting for the Benevolent Fund. I can actually still see the Thompson twins all the way out on Ben number three at the moment. It's a long way home. I oh, know Jacob Hook is out there. It's a long way home for them um, from there. Glasgow then 6 6 on 11 points. You would think at least they're going to go up to 12 in a short while with that aggregate point. Then you've got Berwick on 11. They're still not out of it, Berwick, but they do have less fixtures in hand over the rest of these teams. Berwick have run 14 races. Edinburgh then in eighth on 10, and Plymouth are bottom on virtue of leg difference. We are just hearing that Alfie Botel will be taking the rider replacement riders. We saw Mark Phillips, club promoter here, at Plymouth stood by his pit gate ready to get on his tractor if necessary but I wouldn't have thought that we'll have too much track grading going on between now and the end of the night Mark's done a sterling job as ever as we see Jacob in his Australian bucket hat making his way round and we'll, we'll take in a race clip from a previous meeting 14 lining up here and we've got gate one, James Pearson here. He's been in the wars all evening. He's coming off of gate one. Gate two is Klaus Vissing in white. Jason Edwards off gate three in red. And Lee Complin, nine plus two, paid 11 for Lee Complin off the outside in yellow. That's it, he's had a great night. I mean, admittedly, he scored most of these points early on in the meeting when I said, and I did feel that he might go off with the other track changes here at the Coliseum. There could be an upset here in a 5-1 to the Gladiators. Well, here we go then. Heat 14 is out the tapes. Tapes go up, away they go. James Pearson has made a good start off the inside. Jason Edwards has gone off of gate three as well. Vissing is plugging away up the inside. And it is at the moment, as Ben Barker predicted, a 5-1 to the Gladiators. Yeah, I mean, I might put some lottery tickets on after that. I felt I was just watching them, but the Klaus is really battling hard. And James has got to watch. He doesn't leave a gap up the inside. Because if he leaves a gap, I'm telling you now, Klaus will take it. But look at it. Jason Edwards out front, showing how good he was last week. Klaus has now moved to the outside. James Pearson needs to be aware. And as I say that, Klaus has just rounded him up. Yeah, it's a good ride from Klaus Fissing. He's shaped up James Pearson nicely. Come around Benz 1 and 2. But Jason Edwards, he is finishing his evening spectacularly, although his job isn't done yet because Klaus Fissing is very quick in that second place. But it is going to be a win for Jason Edwards to finish his night. Three points to him. Klaus Fissing with that second. James Pearson third. It's another heat advantage, frustratingly almost, for the Gladiators as they finish with another 4-2 here. So here's the official result. It was a win for Jason Edwards. Three points to him in red. Two points to Klaus Fissing in white. One point to James Pearson in blue. There we had Jason Edwards guesting for Plymouth against Glasgow. Last year, as we take a look into the referee's box, there's Larry, track DJ, and the man who announces us the results here at the Coliseum, Barbara Hawley, the referee, in the right-hand corner. As we take a look around... There is Barbara trying to keep on track of all the goings on out on the track here this evening. Thankfully, she's not been needed to adjudicate too many decisions tonight. We don't want to see the referee used in every heat. And luckily tonight, there hasn't been anywhere near as much drama on the track as we've had in a lot of recent meetings. There's a different look to the Coliseum from the top of the uh, referee's building. See the Colin Hill stand in the back. I think a few people have gone to get some refreshments just to get them through the next few heats before we take in the seven heats of British Championship 250cc action and we have the two minutes on for heat number 13 and this is important as we see Ben Barker back out up against what you'd imagine will be a really tough duo to crack in Anders Rowe and Chris Harris this promises to be an absolute cracker of a finish to the meeting. We're into a three heat mini meeting from here then. Just two points in it, 37-35. Hope you're really enjoying the action at home as much as we are here at the Coliseum this evening. As I say, do stick around for that second half action with the British Youth Championship afterwards. 
You heard the bikes warming up behind us a little bit earlier on. As the riders do make their way out onto the track, Chris Harris making his way round. He won't be the last one in line. Alfie Botel will be the last one out onto the track. And you can't help but feel this is a vital, vital race in the context of the fixture. Alfie Botel will go off the inside in red. Nine plus a bonus for his name. Chris Harris off gate number two in white with 11 points. Ben Barker in blue off gate three, nine points. And Anders Rowe off the outside in yellow with five points to his name so far. This is huge. Two points on the line that could make or break both team seasons. It's a long way back for the Gladiators from here if they don't manage to get the two points. But for Glasgow, it will be a huge bonus in their pursuit of the playoffs as they try, and let's not forget, defend that title that they won last year. And they did so well to win it last year. Cami Brown leading his team excellently with Chris Harris. As I say, great to hear from Cami earlier on, one of the great characters of the sport, always in good form. Him and Gary were having Plenty of fun up at Ashfield earlier in the season, but here we go. Heat number 13, the start marshal moves out of the way, and we are underway, and Chris Harris has made the gate. But vitally important that the two gladiators have slotted into second and third. Ben Barker is going to try the Harris line and go wide. Is he going to try and cut it back up the inside off the banking? He is. Harris shows the way from Barker. Botel has slotted into second place. Botel's got bike issues. Alfie's got bike problems at the back. And Anders Rose slots in the second, but Barker's not finished with Chris Harris out front just yet. Alfie's managed to get going again, I think. But Harris shows the way out in front in white from Ben Barker in blue. Anders Rowe is back in third in yellow. Alfie Botel at the back. One lap to go. We are about to be tied up at the Coliseum. Harris going high and wide. He's got all the speed he needs. He's covered off Ben Barker. And Chris Harris with another win and a vital 2-4 to the Tigers. Well, well, well. I hinted that this wasn't done earlier on on aggregate points. Well, maybe it's not done on the match fixture yet either. Chris Harris gets one back on Ben Barker, who has to slot into second. 53.06 for Bomber out in front. This ain't finished yet. Let me tell you, it's 39 apiece on the night. A 4-2 to the Tigers. A win in white for Chris Harris. Ben Barker in second in blue takes the two points. A point for Anders Rowe in third in yellow. And Alfie Botel with bike issues at the back in red with that rider replacement ride. So congratulations to the Glasgow Tigers. They will take that bonus point. But right now, they will be sensing more with what promises to be a really strong pairing here in heat number 14. James Pearson it is who's going to come out in place of Jody Scott just to strengthen them that little bit more. So, Patrick Beck and Joe Thompson will be looking to keep this tight with one heat to go after this. The scores are level, 39 apiece. The two minutes are on. And we've actually got two riders out in yellow helmet colours here. Jack Smith sprinting across the track with a white helmet colour to go on Jordan Jenkins' head. He will be off the inside in white. Joe Thompson off the gate number two in blue. James Pearson off gate number three in yellow. He is correct to be in yellow. And off the outside in red is Patrick Beck with three paid five to his name. And the scores level at 39 apiece. This is anybody's meeting. This, all of a sudden, gets even more tense by the minute. Are we in for a superheat? Or can either of these teams deal the cruelest of blows at the end of the night? Jenkins off one in white. Thompson in blue. Off gate number two. Pearson off gate number three in yellow. And Beck off gate number four in red. The red lights are on around the track at the moment. The red lights are on, I'm not sure. The two minutes are cancelled. The red lights are on. I'm not quite sure what's going on. The clerk of the course has been asked to contact 
the referee's box at the moment. We've just got a little hiatus just to add to the tension. The riders still don't know it. The two minutes have been cancelled. And the riders now, I think, will make their way back round to the pits, although they're not too keen to make their way back round to the pits. But I think they're going to have to because the two minutes have been cancelled. Barbara Hawley has cancelled the two minutes or has she put them back on? Because the red lights have now gone off again and we are good to go. Well, that added to the atmosphere just a little bit. Just to build suspense and drama. A delay to heat number 14. The scores are level, 39 apiece. Here we go. The tapes rise and away they go. And making the gate in blue is Joe Thompson. James Pearson's going to go high and wide and try and get around the outside. In white then is Jordan Jenkins. At the back is Patrick Beck. Joe Thompson's got Tigers left, right and centre. And through is Jordan Jenkins. And Jenkins takes the lead for the Tigers. But now Patrick Beck is all over the back of James Pearson. It's all on the line with two laps to go. Pearson is down. Pearson comes down on Ben Four. He's still on the ground. Jenkins shows the way. The red lights are on. Wow, what drama. James Pearson, thankfully back on his feet. And Pearson will be excluded. And we're going to see it. He just carries a bit of speed into Ben 3 and the bike lifts. And by that point, unfortunately, Pearson's a passenger. And he just makes contact with the air fence. But it's great to see James back up on his feet. And well, we now, we now have only three riders in heat number 14 as James Pearson receives a warm round of applause as he makes his way off the track, a, a tough end to his night, coming to grief. Chris Harris with a pat on the back as James makes his way back in, looking pretty pretty dejected after that. Poor James, it's not been the homecoming back to Plymouth he would have wanted. Frustrating night for him. And it ends there with an exclusion in heat number 14, a little show of aggression there. Not, not happy with how his night's ended, but here we go. Just when you thought you couldn't throw anything else into the mix, we've only got three riders in heat number 14 in a meeting that's tied. Captain Ben Barker looks on. Cammy Brown wants another chat with Barbara Hawley. They're clocking up their phone minutes at the moment, the pair of them. And Cammy will get his chat with Barbara Hawley. They've had plenty of conversations so far tonight. Mark Phillips in conversation with Ben Barker, but now the two minutes are on. No messing around from Barbara Hawley now. We are about to get back underway. Three riders, so Jordan Jenkins will be off the inside in white and he will have two gladiators on the outside. A 3-3 three, three here, it doesn't need me to tell you that that will leave us 42 apiece with just heat 15 to come. Any sort of heat advantage to the Gladiators gives them that boost going into 15. It is on a knife edge here. Patrick Beck, Ben Barker is going in to issue a rally cry. Gary May will have a chat with Joe Thompson. This couldn't be any better poise, could it? And Rob Duran will have to contact Barbara Hawley once again. Clark of the course and the referee now in good talking terms. So Jordan Jenkins is the lone tiger then. Looking to fend off two gladiators and a huge roar greets Patrick Beck as he comes out onto the track. What a moment this could be for these two boys. If they can notch up a maximum, would give them such a huge advantage going into heat 15, but there's a lot of racing to be done. Four laps of the Coliseum ahead. How will this end up? Answers on a postcard, please, at home. Off the inside in white is Jordan Jenkins. He is the lone Glasgow Tiger left in heat number 14. Gate number two in blue is Joe Thompson. And gate number four in red is Patrick Beck. As we prepare for a vital heat 14. 
Here we go. Start Marshall moves out of the way with a green light on and away they go. Patrick Beck's medical gate from the outside. Joe Thompson gets the inside. Can Beck slingshot around the outside of Jordan Jenkins? He's trying. Jenkins is going to try and go the inside. Oh, Beck's down. One more drama. Oh, Tom Jenkins is down and Thompson's been collected. That is a horrible incident. A horrible incident on bend four. All three riders on the deck and huge entourages rush out to greet the riders. We have absolutely everything crossed that both of them are okay. That was absolutely horrible. A truly nasty moment at the Coliseum. Patrick Beck came down first on bend three. And then on bend four, Jordan Jenkins' bike lifted. He went to ground and unfortunately Joe Thompson had nowhere to go. And all we can do now is wish that both riders are okay. Patrick Beck has walked away and makes his way back to the pits. There you can see Patrick walking in. All that matters now is that both riders are okay. The medical staff have rushed out to greet them on the track and give them the treatment they need. This really is a nasty moment. As I say, all that matters now is the riders get the privacy they need to be treated and, and it takes as long as it needs to. This really isn't the way we wanted such a fine meeting to finish. It really has been great entertainment, but as I say, all that matters now is that Joe Thompson and Jordan Jenkins are okay. <clears throat> As we look around at the Noonan Park garage sign to the right, the bar there in shot with the bar bandits on Ben 2, I can promise you that the Coliseum bar, the music you're hearing on the Tannoy is dead silent right now because nothing matters other than the safety and the health and well-being of Jordan Jenkins and Joe Thompson who continue to receive treatment. As I say, this really was a nasty, nasty incident. And in fact, Jordan Jenkins is up on his feet, I can see, through the crowd of riders down there, and he gets a, a warm round of applause as a bike is lifted off the track, which is never a good sign. So it looks like Jordan Jenkins is on his feet. Naturally, now all that matters is that Joe Thompson receives the treatment as Jordan Jenkins gets a round of applause as he makes his way back up the home straight here. Nice to see the Plymouth crowd giving him a round of applause. You'd expect nothing less from the Plymouth crowd. But the medics continue to attend to Joe Thompson down there on bend number four. And Joe is up on his feet. Joe Thompson is now up on his feet. Thank heavens. All that matters and the best news of all here is that both riders have walked away from that truly horrible incident on bend number four. Jordan Jenkins leaving the track very steadily with Cami Brown with him. Just looking back, just to check. Joe is walking back, which is great to see. I take my hat off to every Speedway rider with what they put themselves through, but this is an absolute... Well, it's great news that they've walked away from that because it truly was a nasty incident. Joe looking pretty dejected, as you would imagine, a, a horrible moment. Horrible moment, and naturally we won't show you a replay of that due to the nature of it. But now Joe and, and Jordan will be looked at by the medics and they will get the treatment that they require and now after all that we will obviously have time for the track to be looked at make sure there's no superficial damage to any of the fencing and then the racing will get back underway in due course when everybody's ready to do so with a decision going to be made by our referee the decision will have to be made, as I mentioned. Patrick Beck came down first on bend number three. And then while that was going on, Jordan Jenkins lifted, picked up some grip. He came off. And sadly, Joe Thompson then had nowhere to go after that. 
Unfortunately, Jenkins landed in Joe Thompson's path and there was an inevitable collision. But as I stress, the best news of all is that both riders have walked away from that incident of their own accord. They, are being, they will be looked at by the medics. They will take time and then eventually we will get a decision. As the clock approaches or ticks over quarter to nine here at the Coliseum, the light's holding a little bit better than I thought it would tonight. As I say, the cloud cover hasn't disappeared. The mist has lifted off those trees in, in direct line to my vision. I think the best sight of all here is the, the ambulance staff are retreating from the pits area. So fingers crossed that any injuries to Jordan Jenkins and Joe Thompson aren't serious. As we just wait as Maximus heads round on his bike to try and cultivate an atmosphere. Maximus giving a little wave to the supporters as he makes his way round to Ben 1 and 2. He'll now be greeted by the Bar Bandits. Who give him a blow with their whistles and their horns. And now we play a waiting game to make sure that Joe and Jordan are okay. As I say, I know we've got a race to run, but all that matters right now is their well-being. And then Barbara Hawley, who's making her way through the pits area here. has taken a look at replays and she will now adjudicate her decision. She delivers a, a little chat to the Glasgow boys there, presumably just wanting to know what she was looking at and how soon an announcement will be, but she's gonna head up to the referee's box now as Maximus just about reaches the end of his lap. I'm not quite sure how he manages to do it. To be honest, there's Cammy Brown. As I say, this isn't the end to the meeting that anybody here at the Coliseum wanted. It's been a really tight, close affair, and all we wanted was it to be settled on the track in the best possible way. And fingers crossed, we still have a chance to do that. There are still two races to be to be run, with two vital points on the line for both teams, and that aggregate point is going back north of the border, regardless of what happens in the next two heats. So for Glasgow, from the five-point haul they could get against Plymouth, they have gained at least a net three. Dan Thompson, Rob Duran and Gary May in conversation. There's James Pearson with Jack Smith. As we hear the announcement of the replay, she's taken several replays. Jordan Jenkins is out. Jordan Jenkins is out of heat number 14, meaning that providing Patrick Beck and Joe Thompson make it round, it will be a 5-0 to the Plymouth Gladiators, meaning that the score would be 44-39. They do have to obviously complete their four laps as Jordan Jenkins speaks to the referee on the phone, or tries to get through to the referee on the phone. But he is out. Jordan Jenkins has been excluded from heat number 14. Now, as I say, Patrick Beck had come down first. He was down first. So let's take a look here at what happened in heat number 14. So there the tapes rise and Patrick Beck and Joe Thompson make the gate. But Jordan Jenkins keeps it to the inside and he has the line. Patrick Beck tries to slingshot around Jordan Jenkins. It looks like there's room, but then he seems to go up the inside. There is, there's a bit of bumping there and Beck comes down and that is where Jordan Jenkins just picks up too much grip. Oh, it's a nasty, nasty incident. As I say, it's a blessing. Both of them have walked away un relatively unscathed from that, it would seem. As Jordan Jenkins and Cammy Brown have a conversation. It's difficult to tell there whether Jordan Jenkins maybe gave a nudge to to Patrick Beck or not. As I say, I can't. I can't say from this angle. I don't have a good enough picture of it. But Patrick Beck came down. It looked tight between Thompson, Beck, and Jenkins. Beck came to grief, and then Jenkins just picked up grip. It's not his fault. What's happened? He's picked up grip. The bike has lifted, and as I say, unfortunately, he's come off. 
and he's just landed in the path of Joe Thompson. And as I say, that is a truly nasty incident. Cammy Brown with a wry smile on his face. Referee speaking to Rob Duran, I believe at the moment the clerk of the course. Cammy wants a word with the referee. Let's take another look and see if we can see any better. I'm going to try and get as close to the screen as I can here on the commentary position as Joe Thompson made the gate. Jordan Jenkins came round the inside. Patrick Beck tried to slingshot round the outside. So as it slows down, Beck, Jenkins, oh, Jenkins bounces. It's tight with Patrick Beck. And that's where he picks up the grip and comes to grief. And that truly is a nasty, nasty incident. Joe Thompson had nowhere to go as Jordan Jenkins lifted and came to grief. And Joe Thompson is out. Joe Thompson has withdrawn from the meeting through injury. So now Jacob Hook comes in in blue. So it's all happening here in heat number 14. The two minutes are on. And we have two gladiators. This is a first for me on Gladiators TV. I'm commentating on a match race between two riders from the, their own team. So this will be interesting. I've commentated on a few things in my time, horse racing and whatnot, but I've never commentated on a match race with two people from the same team. Uh, nobody off gate number one. Jacob Hook in blue off gate number two. There is no Tiger off gate number three. And Patrick Bake is off the, Patrick Beck even, is off the outside in red, off gate number four. So bear with me. This is a stranger scenario as I've commentated on on Gladiators TV, but we're gonna go with it. Heat number 14 and the two Gladiators are at the tapes. Patrick Beck in red off the outside. Jacob Hook in blue off gate number two. As long as they complete, it will be a 5-0 to the Plymouth Gladiators, meaning it will be 44-39 with one heat to go. The green light is on, and perhaps the strangest race of the season gets underway, and Jacob Hook in blue it is, who takes around Patrick Beck in red, and three more laps of two gladiators essentially getting track time lie ahead and Jacob Hook now pulling ahead of Patrick Beck and he will complete lap number two in front and he's in front by about six bike lengths of Patrick Beck in second and the two gladiators have 240 meters to coast around to claim a 5-0 Jacob Hook leads He's opening up out in front now for Patrick Beck. For Patrick, it's vital bike time. But as they come round, in the strangest situation of them all, without a doubt the strangest race of the season, it's a win in blue for Jacob Hook. It's a second in red for Patrick Beck. It's a 5-0 to the Plymouth Gladiators. And when you think you've seen it all, Speedway finds a way to throw something else at you. And we're going to get an official result with a win in red or a win in blue for Jacob Hook. He takes the win in 54.01. And second in red is Patrick Beck. And there were no Tigers to complete the race. For Patrick Beck, it was vital track time. He gets a bit more track experience. Gary May congratulates him. Officially, it's two paid wins for Patrick Beck tonight. He's been a part of two maximums for the Gladiators. As we take a look at the gate stats ahead of Heat 15, and it's four apiece for gate four and two. Three wins apiece for gates one and three. So you would imagine that Plymouth would take two and four off that. But I imagine Ben Barker will fancy any gate choice here for the two of the boys. As we take the riders' scores on the night there, nine pay ten for Alfie Botella. Really good night's work for him. Nine points for Dan Thompson. Five paid eight for Patrick Beck. Eleven points from five for Ben Barker. 
we send our best wishes to Joe Thompson, who withdrew from the meeting with five paid six. Five points for Jacob Hook, leaves the Gladiators on 44. Chris Harris is on 14 from five. Jack Smith with two paid three. Jason Edwards, eight paid ten. Another strong night for Jason in the championship. Jordan Jenkins with seven from his four. We wish Jordan well. Anders Rowe with six from four. James Pearson with just two points. And Jody Scott failing to score. Leaves the Tigers on 39. And we've seen it all. And there's still a chance for the Tigers to take us to a super heat if they replicate a 5-0. Hopefully, if that does happen, it's not in as dramatic circumstances. But we shall see. Ben Barker, you would imagine, will be out in heat number 15. Looking in good form with Mark Simmons and Dan Thompson. You can see preparing himself to come out in heat number 15. And of course, at the end of this heat, Dan's attentions will turn to the well-being of his brother, who is being looked at by the medical staff here at the Coliseum. Jason Edwards is ready to go in yellow, and I think you can probably guess who's going to be coming out in white. We're going to have a battle of the Truro lads once again in heat number 15. It would seem there is Chris getting that white helmet ready. He'll have seen it all, I'm sure. He'll have seen it all before, and Jason Edwards gets a chance to reward his fine efforts tonight. Here in heat number 15, Gary May shares a joke with Cammy Brown. I'm sure after this heat, Cammy may partake Gary, but it's just a little bit tough for him at the moment, having lost both his riders there in heat 14. But there's always a good relationship between Gary and Cammy, two of the championship's great stalwarts, Cammy Brown, <laughs> with a, a shake of the head to the camera, keeping his spirits high. Plymouth will be off one and three here in heat number 15. Dan Thompson will take the ride off gate number one in red. Ben Barker will come off gate number three in red. Chris Harris will come off gate number two in white and yellow. Jason Edwards will come off gate number four. So as I said, Ben Barker will fancy himself off any gate choice and he's chosen one and three despite two and four having one more win apiece on their name. So here we go then, heat number 15. And as long as both Gladiators complete, the Gladiators will take the two points away from the fixture here at the Coliseum and notch up another home win on the season for Glasgow to take us to a superheat. They require two Gladiators to, in, to not complete the heat as Dan Thompson and Ben Barker make their way round. Already at the tapes is Jason Edwards and the final man out onto the track. For more than likely the final time this season will be Chris Harris in white. As I say, it really is a pleasure to have Chris down at the Coliseum, as it is the Glasgow Tigers and the Glasgow fans on the back straight. Give Chris a roar. We wish them safe travels at the end of the night. But in red off gate number one will be Dan Thompson. Gate number two in white will be Chris Harris. Gate number three in blue, Ben Barker, the captain of the Gladiators. And gate number four, Jason Edwards in yellow. And what does Heat 15 have in store? The Gladiators on the verge of another two points. The Tigers will take home the consolation of the aggregate bonus point. They will have wanted so much more. But unfortunately, due to an action-packed Heat number 14, it isn't to be for them. And we have just four laps of Cab Direct Championship Speedway to come. Don't go anywhere. After heat number 15, we do have seven heats of the British Youth 250cc Championship to come live here on Gladiators TV. I'm going nowhere. Hopefully the voice holds up for those seven heats. I'm sure it will. But we have four more heats of Championship Speedway to come in the start. Marshall calling Chris Harris and Dan Thompson into line. And a here we go. Let's see what 15 has in store for us. The green light is on, the tapes rise. Jason Edwards makes a good one off gate number four. But so do Ben Barker and Dan Thompson. Chris Harris will try and go between them, but Ben slots around the outside. And the two gladiators are on a 5-1. Dan Thompson and Ben Barker are showing the way home for the gladiators in 15. And look to sign off in style this evening. And this is team riding at its very best so far. Barker going wide. Dan Thompson up the inside, they have a look for one another. Chris Harris is in third, Jason Edwards in fourth, but Bomber can't do anything about the two gladiators in front. Barker lifts going down the back straight, but it isn't a problem. 
Harris is going wide trying to generate speed. 226 metres to go for Ben Barker and Dan Thompson. And this will raise the roof. It's another maximum for the Gladiators. Dan Thompson and Ben Barker bring home the 5-1. They bring home the two points. And that is how you sign off in style for the Gladiators. Absolutely superb. A shrug of the shoulders from Chris Harris as he comes back from the pits area. The two Gladiators made the gate and made it tricky for them. And look at what it means to the two boys. After what happened in heat number 14, Ben Barker goes round with Dan Thompson. They will take the applause of the crowd and the cheers. Ben enjoys that. 53.81, Dan Thompson giving us wheelies on the back straight. And it finishes 49 to 40 at the Coliseum. It's two points to the Gladiators. It is one point to the Glasgow Tigers who take the aggregate point 98 to 81. And what a way to sign off as we take the heat result from heat 15. It's a win in blue for Ben Barker. Second in red, Dan Thompson. Third in white was Chris Harris, who never gave up, as you would expect. Third and fourth in yellow was Jason Edwards. So that brings an end to the cab direct action for the evening. Ben Barker and Dan Thompson sharing a nice moment on cam, on camera. And Mark's going to bring round the truck for the Gladiators to take their lap as the 250cc boys get ready to take to the track. But first of all, the final match result, the Plymouth Pro Park Gladiators 49, the Allied Glasgow Tigers 40. It's two points to the Gladiators, one point from tonight for the Tigers on the aggregate. There is your aggregate result, and it finishes 98 to Glasgow, 81 to Plymouth. And all that's left to say tonight is we wish Cammy Brown and the Glasgow Tigers all the very best in what's left of their season. As we say, always a team that give absolutely everything and great to see some Glasgow Tigers fans make the trip down tonight. Let's run through the rider scores on the evening. Alfie Botel with nine pay 10 from his five. Dan Thompson with 11 pay 12 from his six. Eight points, five paid three for Patrick Beck from four. Ben Barker with 14 points, a real return to form for him. Joe Thompson with five paid six. We wish him all the best. Jacob Hook with five. For the Tigers, Chris Harris gave it everything he's got. 15 points for him. Jack Smith with two paid three at number two. Jason Edwards with eight paid ten, but a great night for Jason. Jordan Jenkins with a really good night for the Tigers, but it ended sourly for him. We wish him all the best. He finishes on seven. Anders Rowe with six, guesting in place of Steve Worrell. James Pearson with two, and no points for Jody Scott. And as I mentioned, the Tigers finish on 40 points as we prepare to go round on a lap with the Gladiators. Paul has found his way onto the truck and he's going to give us a, a Gladiators truck eye view of the lap. Gary May trying to find his way up. I think Alfie Boto might have to help Gary onto the truck. Gary hoists his way up. Jacob Hook and Dan Thompson join them and they will complete their lap of the Coliseum. Great to see so many staying for the British Championships 250cc and they take a, cute, a warm round of applause as we ride on board with the Gladiators on their lap. And as I say, if you have joined us from Glasgow this evening here at Gladiators TV, we wish you all the very best for the rest of your championship fixture. As mentioned, meetings against Edinburgh at home. Still got to go back to Armadale after last night's postponement. Oxford at home and away in a vital clash. That will be for a race in the playoffs. And then Redcar at home to round off the season. For, for the Gladiators, well, it's the Pairs Championship next on the 16th on Friday night at Sandy Lane. The night before the British Grand Prix at Cardiff. Dan Thompson and Ben Barker, your maximum man from heat number 15, will be representing the Gladiators. And next, live on Gladiators TV, we will be back in a fortnight's time on the 24th of August as the Pool Pirates come to town. It's always a very interesting meeting when the Pirates are in town. And then Plymouth obviously have away trips to Redcar and Workington to come, as well as a trip to Workington. Main thanks to Rob on our main camera with Paul, who's having a nice trip round 
with the guys on the bus. I've been Joe Bow, your presenter, commentator and pits reporter. Gareth Bemister has been your centre green announcer and Andy Haig has been producing the show for us in the truck and a big thanks to all our associated partners here at Gladiators TV. As they make their way round the Colin Hill stand and they will soon be greeted by the bar bandits on bend number two who I'm sure are going to make plenty of noise for their pro park gladiators as they make their way around. We're going to see them here on the screen. You get to see their pretty faces as there they are. As they make round, Patrick Beck salutes them. Gary May with a warm round of applause. And now the riders will make their way back off the track and we will prepare for our second half here on Gladiators TV. As I say, don't go anywhere with the purchase of the live stream. You do get the British Youth Championship 250cc action round two with round one coming at Workington earlier in the year. There's Maximus. He went on a lap with his bike. 